बेस्ट गिफ्ट फॉर एवरी वन कारवा मिनी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सेकेंड चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता कॉन्टेंट्स ऑफ द गीता समराइज दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एंड आचार्य ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वाइड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट संजय उवाच तम तथा कृपया विष्ट अश्रुपूर्णाकुले क्षण विशीद वाक्यम उवाच मधुसूदन संजय सेड सींग अर्जुन full of compassion and very sorrowful his eyes brimming with tears madhusudana krishna spoke the following words arjuna was feeling great compassion and this compassion is considered a very good quality however this is the first instruction of bhagavad gita that compassion lamentation and tears on material platform are because of ignorance of the knowledge of the self usually we think and that is how we define all the activities of our life all the activities are directed towards comfort of the body we think if the body is comfortable then we'll be happy if there is discomfort for the body such situations we are willing to avoid but compassion and lamentation simply for the body is like compassion for the dress of a drowning man if a man is drowning and we are crying for the dress of such a person then that is less intelligence in a similar fashion we have to understand more important than saving the dress is saving the person who is drowning with that dress but all the efforts are simply to save the dress this body is nothing but dress of the spirit soul that is why it is told by lord rishabdev lord rishabdev was also incarnation of krishna and his great son was bharat maharaj and because of bharat maharaj this entire planet got the name bharat varsha before his rule it was called ilavrat varsha so bharat maharaj along with his brothers was given very very sublime instructions by his father rishabdev before he was about to take sanyas and the most important of all instruction is lord rishabdev tells to bharat maharaj nayam deho dehe bhajam riloke kashtan kaman arhate vid bujamye tapo divyam putra ka yen satvam shudhyed yasmad brahm sokhyam tvanantam human life is not meant simply to bring comfort to the body rather people do not know we should try to take voluntarily discomforts that is called tapasya tapasya means willingly one is taking discomforts in life for what for spiritual pleasure for spiritual advancement the body becomes purified if one takes discomforts according to the direction of the scriptures and by such scientific 
taking of discomforts even for maintaining physical body we take discomforts otherwise we'll get diseased and for spiritual fitness spiritual pleasure physical discomforts mental discomforts are very much required thus vedic culture is full of tapasya so human life is only meant for tapasya rishi dev tells sense enjoyment which is available even in the lower species like that of stool eating hogs vid bhujam ye human being should not work to enjoy the same pleasure but one should do tapasya so that one's existence becomes purified once the existence is purified then a person can experience brahma sokhyam spiritual pleasure and because we are spirit souls unless we relish spiritual pleasure in our life we will always be dissatisfied so arjuna here because of ignorance was simply crying for the external dress he was thinking i am going to kill my relatives and he was not able to understand that in this activity of war lies the spiritual emancipation of both the parties how is it so that lord krishna will explain श्री भगवाच कुतस्वा कश्मल विषमे समुपस्थित अनार्यजुष्टम अस्वर्ग्यम अकीर्ति करमर्जुन द सुप्रीम पर्सन भगवान सेड माय डियर अर्जुन हाउ हैव दीज इम्प्योरिटीज कम अपॉन यू दे आर नॉट एट ऑल बिफिटिंग अ मैन हु नोज द प्रोग्रेसिव वैल्यूज ऑफ लाइफ they do not lead to higher planets but to infamy very important word used here for lord krishna is bhagwan shri bhagwan uvacha what is bhagwan why god is called bhagwan this question may come in many minds so the entire vedic system of education directs a man to have brahma jigyasa brahma jigyasa means to understand the spiritual existence what is the ultimate reality why am i existing who am i within this body who has created this body a wonderful super computer who has assembled this wonderful brain who has assembled these most wonderful fantastic cameras all the eyes like this who has manufactured this body in which every cell is more complex than a metropolitan city who has assembled and for what purpose what is the truth of life this is called brahma jigyasa so just like modern science has analyzed actually whatever we see around us the atomic physics says it is actually nothing but combination of protons neutrons and electrons nothing else protons neutrons electrons they combine together to produce whatever we see around us but now the science has become more advanced and they are understanding no even proton neutron electrons are not the fundamental particles they are combination of some other energies like this if we keep on tracing ultimately what is truth what is this substance that we are seeing around us wood cement is definitely definitely an illusion but even atoms and proton neutron electrons are also not the ultimate reality so what is that ultimate reality the substance which is manifesting in so many forms around us so the vedas inform us that is brahm or the spirit so unless a person understands this ultimate reality the problems of life cannot be solved so those who are seers of the truth shrimad bhagavatam explains vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj gyanam advayam that absolute truth is discovered by them in three phases which are those three phases brahmeti paramatmeti bhagwan iti shabdyate the first phase of understanding the ultimate truth absolute truth is called brahm brahm means spiritual energy when we keep on analyzing go deeper what is the fundamental energy we will understand there is one energy which is all pervading 
And when a person advances further, he realizes actually this energy which is all pervading is coming from a person who is present in all of our hearts. That is called Paramatma. In this body there is Atma that Krishna will explain in detail in 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But along with Atma there is another Atma and that is called Param Atma. So the individual Atma is conscious of this body but Paramatma is conscious of all the bodies. This is called second phase of realization of Absolute Truth that the energy which is there everywhere this energy is coming from a person who is present in the hearts of all the living entities. And then the third and the final phase of realization of Absolute Truth the most advanced transcendentalists are able to understand the Bhagavan feature. Brahm, Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan Iti Shabdiyate So this Bhagavan feature is the ultimate word in realization of Absolute Truth. What is the meaning of Bhagavan? Some people ask whether Bhagavan is a person or simply an energy. Actually, if we understand the Sanskrit language, the meaning of the root, then such a question will not arise. Bhagavan, Van means possessor and Bhag means opulences. The definition of Bhagavan has been given by Parashar Muni, father of Vyasadev, the author of Mahabharat, Bhagavad Gita, the compiler of all the Vedas. His father, Parashar Muni, has given definition in the Vishnu Puran. Aishwaryasya samagrasya viryasya yashasa shriya gyan vairagya yashchaiva shannam bhag itingana. Bhag means opulence. There are six kinds of opulences which make a person attractive. One opulence is the beauty. Beautiful people attract others. Second opulence is wisdom. It attracts. Third opulence is power. Strength, if a person is very strong. Fame and renunciation. So any person who has got these opulences and riches. So any person has got these six opulences becomes very attractive. So Parashar Muni explains, Samagrasya, there could be many many rich people but nobody can claim all the riches in the world belong to me. So all the riches are owned by a person, that person is called Bhagavan. So any person who can claim that all the riches, wealth of the world, creation belongs to me, that is Bhagavan. So any person who has got all the opulences in completion, that is called Bhagavan. Bhagavan means who is having all the riches, who is most beautiful, who is having all the strength in this world, who is most wise, who is most learned, he is called Bhagavan. Thus, these are the attributes of a person. So, Bhagavan means possessor of opulence, a person. So, ultimate truth cannot be simply dead energy, impersonal energy, because we see beautiful designs around us. Energy cannot act automatically and create designs. There has to be a conscious designer. So some people tell God is only a person, ultimate truth is person. Some people tell ultimate truth is only all-pervading impersonal energy. But actually, the all-pervading impersonal energy called Brahm and Bhagavan are non-different features of Absolute Truth. Absolute Truth is having personal aspect as well as impersonal aspect. But the impersonal aspect energy is dependent on the person. So there is no difference between the two, Brahm and Bhagavan. They are one and the same. Example given is like that of sun and the sunlight. There is no difference between sun and sunlight because it is not possible that sun is existing without its light. And it is not possible also that light is existing without sun. So in that sense, sun and sunlight are one and the same. But still there is difference. If I am seeing the sunlight, I am contacting the sunlight, it does not mean I am touching or I have entered the sun planet. This is called achintya bhed abhes, oneness and difference at the same time. So in this way, 
Definitely absolute truth is Brahm all pervading energy which is non different from Bhagwan but this all pervading energy is emanating from Bhagwan the personality of godhead just like the sunlight is emanating from sun this is the perfect understanding of absolute truth so thus uh, ved vyas has not written shri krishna uvacha because people may think oh krishna one powerful man is giving his opinion so throughout the bhagavad gita lord krishna has been addressed whenever lord krishna speaks as shri bhagwan uvacha shri bhagwan uvacha ved vyas wants to tell please understand this knowledge is coming from bhagwan the supreme reality from whom all the living entities are coming all the planets are coming all the matter is coming he is the creator therefore knowledge given by him is perfect so people are having so many confusions about this world what is this world all about what is the purpose who we are and we are going to get answers of all these questions by bhagwan the supreme person creator himself how fortunate we are so let us see how lord the supreme lord is going to give this wonderful wisdom to arjuna and bring him out of lamentation क्लैब्यम आस्मगम पार्थ नयतवै उपपद्यते क्षुद्रम हृदय दौर्बल्यम त्यक्तिष्ठा पर सन ऑफ प्रिथा डू नॉट यील टू दिस डिग्रेडिंग इम्पोर्टेंस इट डज नॉट बिकम यू गिव अप सच पेटी वीकनेस ऑफ दी हार्ट and arise o chastiser of the enemy arjuna uvacha katham bhishma maham sankhe dronam cha madhusudana eshu bhi pratyotsyami pujar havari sudana arjuna said o killer of madhu krishna How can I counteract with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? So it is Vedic injunction etiquette moral obligation that superior should not be offered even a verbal fight. And who is superior? A person can be superior in knowledge that is the first criteria or in social position that is second criteria. or in age if a person is more in age social position or knowledge such people are called superiors and they should never be offered even a verbal argument it is sinful activity so if a verbal argument also cannot be offered here arjuna is being told to kill them so he is telling how can i pierce them with arrows arjuna is completely bewildered this is against the religious injunctions guru nahatva hi mahanubhavan sheyo bhoktum bhiksham apih loke hatvarth kamanstu guru nihaiva bhunjiya bhogan rudhira pradigdhan it is better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers even though they are avaricious they are nonetheless superiors if they are killed our spoils will be tainted with blood na chay tad vidma katarno gariyo yad va jaye ma yadi va no jaye yu ho याने वहत्वा न जिजी विशामस ते वस्थिता प्रमुखे धार्त राष्ट्रा नॉ डू वी नो विच इज बेटर कॉन्करिंग देम और बींग कॉन्कर्ड बाय देम द सन्स ऑफ धृत राष्ट्रा हुम इफ यू किल्ड वी शुड नॉट केयर टू लिव आर नाउ स्टैंडिंग बिफोर अस ऑन दिस बैटल फील्ड सो दिस शोज दैट अर्जुना इज हैविंग all the good qualities he is a very virtuous man even though he was put along with his family into so many troubles by the kauravas and such aggressors are standing their wife was 
attempted to be disrobed in a full assembly they were given poison their house was set on fire and so many other life attempts were made so an ordinary person would not leave the chance to attack such an enemy and kill him but arjuna his senses are perfectly under control very nicely as per his capacity he is analyzing oh this is sinful this is bad even though i can kill them they are avaricious but what will happen to their families they are elderly people they are supposed to guide family families without guidance will fall down from the path of religion will not attain the ultimate objective of life like this arjuna is when in the eyes live with controlled senses and controlled mind he is analyzing the situation so thus arjun is perfect candidate for self realization unless the senses are controlled unfortunately today there is no training for controlling the senses we think the more we indulge in sense enjoyment we'll be happy no that is illusion if the senses are not controlled there is no question of coming to the platform of knowledge and without knowledge and devotion there is no question of liberation कार्पण्य दोषोपहत स्वभाव पृछा ता धर्म सम्मूचेता यश्चित ब्रूहि ते शिष्यस्ते हम शाधि प्रपन्न नाउ आई एम कन्फ्यूज अबाउट माई ड्यूटी एंड हैव लॉस्ट ऑल कंपोजर बिकॉज अ वीकनेस in this condition i am asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me now i am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me karpanya dosho pahata swabhavah the word used here is kripana from kripana comes karpanya what is kripana kripana means miser and who is a miser it is explained in गर्ग संहिता यो वेत अक्षर गार्गी अविदित्वा अस्मा लोका प्रयति स कृपण एनी पर्सन हू डज नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द साइंस ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड पास इज अवे फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक कैट्स एंड डॉग सिंपली केटरिंग टू द डिमांड्स ऑफ मटीरियल माइंड एंड बॉडी सच अ पर्सन इज कॉल माइजर वाई सच अ पर्सन इज कॉल माइजर हू डज नॉट डू स्पिरिचुअल इंक्वायरी because miser does not know how to utilize the assets he could be very rich but he would be living a very wretched life in a similar fashion in human form of life by self realization person can solve all the problems of life but if a person does not do self realization he has wasted this very rich asset of a human form of life so he is called miser and such misers mainly they are not able to have spiritual inquiry because of material affection and family attachments we are all just like travelers suppose in a long journey we sit in a restaurant with some strangers and we spend all our money on taking care of such strangers and all our love and affection we show on them so such an act is not very wise because all of us will carry on to our respective destinations we are never going to meet again that is the situation in this material world we are all travelers we are traveling through various bodies life after life and then we assemble in this world and we meet in this eternal voyage in groups called families so if you simply spend all the time the family members are natural objects of affection but if a person is overly affectionate he is attached to anything in this material world people or objects places anything then a person will get trapped in the cycle of birth and death so arjuna here because of strong family affection is not able to wage a war which is his duty even though his family members are standing on the other side So Arjuna is conscious that this is karpanya dosha this is miserly weakness because of this family affection i am not able to do my duty and unless a person does his duty very nicely there is no question of self realization 
Another important word used in this verse is Shadhi Maam Tvam Prapannam. So when such complexities arise in life, Arjuna is very successful person, very strong person. There is no material dearth in his life, but still he is perplexed. So even though we can become very very successful in our material life, perplexities are going to come in life, and the solution lies in prapadyante, shadhi maam tvam prapannam surrender. One has to surrender to Krishna. or krishna's representative who is called guru or spiritual master unless one completely surrenders to guru there is no question of solving the problems of life of course such surrender is not blind just like using our intelligence we find a very good doctor and then surrender unto that doctor doctor please operate my heart and you please fix my disease unless such complete surrender is there doctor will not be able to help despite doctor's willingness In a similar fashion unless we completely surrender into spiritual master we cannot solve the problems of life of course we should be wise enough to have knowledge who is a bona fide spiritual master only then surrender should be done nahi prapashyami mama panudyad yachokam uchchoshanam indriyanam avapya bhuma vasapatnam riddham राज्यम सुराणाम अपिचाधिपत्यम आई कैन फाइंड नो मींस टू ड्राइव अवे दिस ग्रीफ व्हिच इज ड्राइंग अप माय सेंसेस आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू डिस्ट्रॉय इट इवन इफ आई विन एन अनराइवल किंगडम ऑन द अर्थ विद सोवरेंटी लाइक दैट ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स इन हेवन संजय उवाचा एव मुक्तवा ऋषिकेशम गुड़ाकेश पर नोत्स्य गोविंद उक्वा तूष्णी बभूव संजय सेड हैविंग स्पोकन दस अर्जुन चेस्टाइजर ऑफ एनिमीज टोल कृष्णा गोविंद आई शैल नॉट फाइट एंड फेल साइलेंट तम उवाच ऋषिकेश प्रहसन भारत सेनोभ्ये विशीद इदम वच ओ डिसेंडेंट ऑफ भरत एट दैट टाइम कृष्ण स्माइलिंग इन द मिडस्ट ऑफ बोथ द आर्मीज स्पोक द फॉलोइंग वर्ड्स टू द ग्रीफ स्ट्रिकन अर्जुन श्री भगवाच अशोच्यानशोचस्व प्रज्ञावादाश भाषसे गतासू न गतासूश्च नानुशोचन्ति पंडिता द ब्लेसड लॉर्ड सेड वाइल स्पीकिंग लर्नड वर्ड्स यू आर मोर्निंग फॉर वॉट इज नॉट वर्दी ऑफ ग्रीफ दोज हु आर वाइज लिमेंट नीदर फॉर द लिविंग नॉर द डेड we see in the society stress depression lamentation is continuously increasing and now various people even celebrities are telling it is okay we should not be shy depression is normal no sir it is not normal it is normal for the ignorant people who are not educated people but a person who is educated educated person learned man is called pandita so those who are wise pandit such a person does not lament lord krishna is telling either for the living or for the dead he does not lament for any situation of this material body lamentation is only the business of the people who are not trained in the science of self realization because i am not the body i am spirit soul i remain eternally the same so all the lamentation this distress is because of abhiniveshataha abhiniveshata means absorption as a sleeping man gets absorbed in the body of the dream and thus he creates situation of so called happiness and distress ideally should be unaffected because it is only a dream 
in a similar fashion we are spirit souls we have got nothing to do with this body and this world but when the spirit soul starts thinking out of illusion i am this body then the situation of so called happiness and lamentation is created but a person who is wise laments neither for the living nor for the dead नेवाहम जातुनासम नेमे जनाधिपाह न भविष्याम सर्वे वयम अतः परम नेवर वॉज देर अ टाइम वेन आई डिड नॉट एग्जिस्ट नॉर यू नॉर ऑल दीज किंग्स नॉर इन द फ्यूचर शेल एनी ऑफ अस सीज टू बी सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन which is given by lord krishna to arjuna never was a time when we were not existing and there shall never be a time in future when any of us will cease to exist arjuna was thinking oh if i kill these people they will cease to exist so krishna told no there is no cause of lamentation because we are spirit soul different from the body we will never cease to exist and apart from the eternality of the individual soul the individuality also is being expressed here there is a class of philosophers called mayavadi impersonalists who tell that we have come from the supreme spirit and now we have got trapped in this body again we have to merge in the supreme spirit so this is rejected by krishna in the words sarve vayam atah param vayam means plural plurality and this plurality of consciousness is also asserted in various upanishads like katha upanishad shweta shvatar upanishad nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko yo bahunam vidhati kaman so the upanishads point out there are two kinds of nityas or eternal entities there is nitya one singular entity and nitya naam so many eternal entities there is chetana one conscious living entity which is different from so many other conscious entities so what is the difference eko yo bahunam vidhati kaman this one eternal living entity conscious living entity takes care of all other infinitesimal consciousnesses so thus plurality is explained here there is one soul which is infinite which is supreme it takes care fulfill the desires bahunam vid dhati kaman of multitudes of infinitesimal atomic living entities so there was never a time sarve vayam atah param lord krishna explains when we were not existing we were always existing and in future also there will never be a time when you merge into me or anybody anybody merges into me we will all continue to exist in future देहिनोस्मिन् यथा देहे कौमारम यौवनम जरा तथा देहांतर प्राप्त धीरस्तत्र न मुह्यते एज द एम्बॉडीड सोल कंटिन्यूअली पासेज इन दिस बॉडी फ्रॉम बॉयहुड टू यूथ टू ओल्ड एज द सोल सिमिलरली पासेज इन टू अनादर बॉडी एट डेथ द सेल्फ रियलाइज सोल इज नॉट बिविल्डर्ड by such a change as we did not cry for change of bodies our body was p shaped in the womb of mother then it developed into a grown up embryo then it came out as a child we did not cry oh, i was p size now my body has changed similarly the child body got transformed into a young body we did not cry at that time for the change of body and then the young man became old man we did not cry for such a change of body similarly krishna is telling tatha dehantara prapti at the time of death soul simply is going to change the body what is the need of crying anyway we are changing body always and death is final change we move to another body simply a change of external appearance so what is the cause of lamentation so dhirastatrna muhyati death 
the media the news it is filled with such news and the whole world is lamenting for death but it is told dhira a self realized soul is not at all disturbed by death matra sparshastu konteya shitoshana sukh dukh da agama pai no nityas ta stiti kshasva bharata so even though we may theoretically understand i am not the body but still we feel the pangs of the body to have practical realization is difficult it needs great advancement in spiritual life but there is a stage just like when a person wakes up from the dream he is no longer affected by the calamities of dream he understands i am not the body of dream such a state of wakefulness self realization is possible but that is very advanced stage till then a person has to lord krishna recommends here ta stiti shasva bharata unfortunately many people have taken to profession of spiritual life and they try to solve the material problems of their disciples in the name of spirituality please ask what is your material desire and i will fulfill it i will cure your disease your toothache and people think this is spiritual life arjuna was in distress so krishna did not tell arjuna okay arjuna no problem you will sit i will fight for you or take this pill of ash and throw it on the enemy enemy will get destroyed no krishna told that is a nature of this material world as long as one is there in the body action reactions will continue just like you feel heat and cold the summer and winter seasons they come and go similarly happiness and distress is nature of this material world we think if i do some adjustment in my life my life will be all set and i will be happy that is not possible so as long as a person is not very advanced where one can practically realize i am not the body one has to tolerate ta stiti shasva bharata tolerate for what for spiritual life when we execute our spiritual duties then in course of such duties just like it is told in the vedas one has to get up early in the morning and take cold water bath now such bath has to be taken even in the winter season so that is a duty like this it is told uh, that you have to fast on certain days in a month if we fast then uh, hunger pangs will disturb a person but one has to tolerate that is called tapasya so one has to learn how to tolerate such material dualities in course of performing the spiritual duties yam hi na vyathyante te purusham purushar shabha sam dukha sukham dhiram somri tatvaya kalpate O best among men Arjuna the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation So very important word used here is amritatvai kalpate amritatva immortality this is the aim of life So one may ask why so many austerities tapasyas are recommended why to take physical discomfort because this physical discomfort brings immortality to the soul there will no longer be need to accept more bodies material bodies which come along with concomitant distress of birth death old age and disease so if we are able to tolerate the happiness and distress we are neither related by material happiness nor we are disturbed by material distress then amritatvai kalpate such a person becomes eligible for amritatva immortality yes so uh, some of the richest people of the world are funding research how to become immortal god is telling here the standard procedure so the spiritual life is nothing but scientific discipline to attain the stage of immortality and solve all the problems of life na sato vidyate bhavo नाभावो विद्यते सतः उभयोरपि दृष्टोंतस 
Vanayostatvadarshibhi. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent there is no endurance, and of the existent there is no cessation. These seers have concluded by studying the nature of both. Very very important verse. Arjuna is crying, so Krishna tells. You should cry for the substance and not for illusion if at all you wish to cry. There are many things in the world which we perceive as real but are non-existent. Just like water in the desert. That is actually called mirage. It is illusion. We see water but water is not there. In a similar fashion, Krishna is telling before crying you understand whether that thing is reality or illusion thus all the philosophers have always been wondering what is reality and what is illusion am i dreaming right now because how would a person know one is dreaming or not even what i am touching this desk i am touching this is dream or this is reality what exists and what does not exist how do we understand that so here lord krishna is quoting the version of the seers of truths how can we understand what is reality and what is illusion krishna has explained just in one verse very beautiful verse na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sataha lord krishna explains those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent there is no endurance so anything which does not endure does not exist and what exists there is no cessation of it so what does not endure we see so many animals around us dog cat fish are they going to endure always no it means they do not exist similarly we see people around us we see our family members will they always exist no they will not endure it means they are non existent they don't exist or oh, don't exist but i touch them i speak with them how do we understand the meaning of the statement they are non existent then what is it that i am seeing around me i am seeing so many personalities species they don't exist means what you are seeing is only dress such identities do not exist just like a man can take the get up of a woman and perform very nicely on the stage similarly another person can take the dress of a lion somebody can take the dress of a tree but there is no tree on the stage there is no lion on the stage there is no woman on the stage the male members have taken these different dresses they are completely different from the appearance those characters on the stage in a similar fashion what is there within everybody either the dog on the street or the fish in the water in the aquarium or within all our family members whom we identify as father mother children male female uncle aunt friend enemy is spirit soul and these are simply different roles which we have taken such personalities do not exist just like on the stage a person has taken certain role he has taken the role of a farmer but farmer does not exist he has taken the role of a warrior warrior does not exist it is only the external get up in a similar fashion dog does not exist there is no dog over there that is why it is told krishna will explain further in bhagavad gita pandita samdarshina shuni chay vashapache cha brahmani gavi hastini a learned man whether he sees an elephant dog or a dog eater he does not discriminate the external dresses he knows these are only dresses within it same similar spirit souls are living so thus a wise person does not discriminate this is my family this is enemy this is human this is animal he sees all of them on equal level he understands these identities do not exist these are simply the designations given to the dresses so thus uh, arjuna is being informed by lord krishna please do not fall for these roles some spirit soul has taken the role of grandfather of your teacher actually these are only roles such personalities do not exist 
so what we see around us are only dresses we are getting attached simply to the dresses we have never seen the spirit soul which is living inside the dress so is it sanity to get attracted by the dresses if a man comes in the dress of a woman and another man gets attracted oh i want to have marry that woman oh that is not woman itself on this that is a man actually in the get up of a woman this is the illusion of this materialistic society we get trapped in the external appearance of dresses and not able to see the spirit soul living within the dress so thus krishna tells arjuna and of the existent there is no cessation spirit soul always continues to exist it will leave this body enter another body the spirit soul is reality and these external designations please such personalities never exist they are only dresses अविनाशी तो तद्विधि येन सर्वम इदम ततम विनाशम अव्ययस्यास्य न कश्चित कर्तुम अर्हति नो दैट व्हिच परवेड्स द एंटायर बॉडी इज इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल नो वन इज एबल टू डिस्ट्रॉय द इम्पेरिशेबल सोल अंतवंताय मे देहा नित्योक्ता शरीर अनाशिनो अमेय से तस्मादुस्व भारत ओनली द मटीरियल बॉडी ऑफ द इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल इमेजरेबल एंड इटर्नल लिविंग एंटिटी इज सब्जेक्ट टू डिस्ट्रक्शन देर फोर फाइट ओ डिसेंडेंट ऑफ भरत य एनम वेति हंता यम मनते हत उभत न विजानी तो नाम हि न हन्यते हि हु थिंग्स दैट द लिविंग एंटिटी इज द स्लेयर और दैट हि इज स्लेन डज नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वन हु इज इन नॉलेज नोज दैट द सेल्फ स्ले इज नॉट नॉर इज स्लेन न जायते मियते वा कदाचि नाम भूत भविता व न भूय अजो निशाश्वत पुराणो न हन्यते हन्यम शरीर फॉर द सोल देर इज नेवर बर्थ नॉट डेथ नॉर हैविंग वंस बीन डज ही एवर सीस टू बी ही इज अनबॉर्न इटर्नल ever existing undying and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain veda vinashinam nityam ya enam ajam avyayam katham sa purushah partha kam ghatayati hantikam o parth how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible unborn eternal and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill vasansi jirnani yatha vihaya navani grahanati naro parani tatha sharirani vihaye jirnani anyani sanyati navani dehi as a person puts on new garments giving up old ones similarly the soul accepts new material bodies giving up the old and useless ones nayanam chindanti shastrani nayanam dahati pavakah na chainam kledayantyapo नाशोषयति मारुत द सोल कैन नेवर बी कट इन टू पीसेस बाय एनी वेपन नॉर कैन ही बी बर्न बाय फायर नॉर मॉइसन बाय वॉटर नॉर विदर्ड बाय द विंड अछेद्योयम अदायोयम अक्लेद्यो शोष्य एव चर्वगत स्थान अचलो यम सनातन दिस इंडिविजुअल सोल इज अनब्रेकेबल एंड इनसल्यूबल 
and can neither be burned nor dried he is everlasting all pervading unchangeable immovable and eternally the same so sometimes people experiment to find out about the soul this consciousness which animates the body at times there are experiments where they just want to weigh the body before and after death in this way they want to understand the mass of the soul sometimes they want to use advanced instruments some radars to capture the motion of the soul but here lord krishna is describing that the soul cannot be cut cannot be cut into pieces cannot be moistened by water cannot be burned by fire the soul cannot be perceived by any of the material instruments because the soul is beyond material dimension technically called turiya so something which is not belonging to material dimension can never be perceived by scientific experiments if at all we have to have knowledge of soul then understanding it from the creator is the only bona fide way here lord krishna further explains it is unbreakable and insoluble and it is everlasting all pervading we are willing to find out whether there is life on other planets here it is being told life is there on all planets soul is all pervading we may not be able to perceive in which form life is existing but uh, here it is being explained soul is all pervading everywhere you will find the souls there is life on every planet and actually science is now beginning to understand even in fire we find microorganisms so thus even on sun planet there is life on every planet it is full of life bustling with life avyaktoyam achintyoyam avikaryoyam uchyate tasma devam vidit vainam nanu shochitu marhasi it is said that the soul is invisible inconceivable immutable and unchangeable knowing this you should not grieve for the body another important word used here is achintyoyam means inconceivable as a dog's brain cannot understand our science and technology similarly the creator lord krishna is telling our brains are not designed our minds are not designed to conceive soul soul is inconceivable to material minds so thus how much ever we try we will not be able to conceive how something is always existing and uh, it cannot be broken into pieces and the small same small soul it animates such a huge body of that of whales and elephants and that of even small ants and mosquitoes how it becomes all pervading how it enters the body how it leaves the body it is very difficult to conceive so if we want to have knowledge understanding from the creator is the only way ath chayanam nitya jatam nityam va manya semritam tathapi tvam mahabaho nainam shochitu marhasi If however you think that the soul is perpetually born and always dies still you have no reason to lament o mighty armed Now Krishna is speaking from the perspective of an atheist as soul is inconceivable it might be difficult unless somebody is austere or devoted it is very difficult to understand the subject matter of soul but even if a person is not able to understand the eternal existence of soul lord krishna is telling if you think this consciousness is function of matter under certain mature material combination the body gives rise to consciousness then also you have no reason to lament because if everything is just chemical then who cries for loss of some chemicals then all your relatives they are nothing but chemical combinations so who cries for loss of chemicals so thus krishna is telling in any case you should not lament jatasya hi dhruvo mrityur 
ध्रुव जन्म मृत चस्मापरिहार्यर्थे नम शोचितुमसी फॉर वन हू इज टेकन हिज बर्थ डेथ इज सर्टन एंड फॉर वन हू इज डेड बर्थ इज सर्टन देर फोर इन द अनवॉइडेबल डिस्चार्ज ऑफ योर ड्यूटी यू शुड नॉट लिमेंट अव्यक्तादीनी भूतानी व्यक्त मध्या भारत अव्यक्त निधना त्र का परिदेवना ऑल क्रिएटेड बींग्स आर अन मैनिफेस्ट इन देर बिगनिंग मैनिफेस्ट इन देर इंटरिम स्टेट एंड अन मैनिफेस्ट अगेन वेन दे आर एनाइलेटेड सो वॉट नीड इज देयर फॉर लेमेंटेशन Now Krishna is presenting both perspectives. If you do not believe in the existence of eternal existence of soul and such philosophers were there even 5000 years ago. They were called vaibhashikas or lok yatikas. Such philosophers would say that consciousness is the result of chemical combination. So anyway nobody cries for loss of chemicals and uh, just like the children they make some sand castles on the beach and then they dismantle it nobody cries for the loss of castle in a similar fashion these bodies are nothing but castles of earth which has combined together so death is nothing but dismantling of this castle why should you cry for it and if at all you believe in the eternal existence of soul then the soul was always existing it took this dress and then again it has left the dress again there is no cause of lamentation in other words krishna is telling no thoughtful person will lament in life lamentation distress is only meant for people who are ignorant brahma bhuta prasannatma na shochati na kankshati shochati lamentation is not meant for people who are educated in the science of self prasannatma they are always happy so this happiness does not lie in working very hard for material success unfortunately in the absence of this guidance given by lord even the best brains of the society are spoiling their time thinking material adjustments will make us happy no we are spirit soul when we become callous for the material adjustments and rise to the platform of self realization then only there is freedom from lamentation otherwise it is going to continue आश्चर्यवत्पश्यति कश्चिदेन आश्चर्यवदति तथव चान्य आश्चर्यवचनम अन्य शृणोति श्रुवापीन वेद न चे सम लुक ऑन द सोल एज अमेजिंग सम डिस्क्राइब हिम एज अमेजिंग एंड सम हियर ऑफ इज एज अमेजिंग वाइल अदर्स इवन आफ्टर हियरिंग अबाउट हिम cannot understand him at all just like a small child who is always busy with his toys cannot understand the function of the government the economic policies and so many advanced concepts similarly people who are very fond of materialistic enjoyment actually there is no difference small child is crying for and hankering for toy car and a grown up man so called educated man is hankering for a big car what is the difference car is big or small both are made of matter material ingredients thus any material desire is but childish but childish a child becomes very sad when he sees his favorite character dying in in the movie similarly if we also cry seeing death in this world which are nothing but movie characters this life is but a movie soul has taken a role for certain time then such situation such behavior is not expected from wise and learned people so anybody who has any material desire i want a big house i want car i want so called success or so called people actually this is only ignorance it is childish so as a child is not expected to understand advanced subject matters people who are very much attached on the material platform cannot understand about soul 
and some who are able to have some understanding they are also not able to have perfect understanding of the soul they mistake soul to be the same as super soul so the vedas are mentioning nitya nitya naam chetana chetana naam atma sijantur nihito guhayam there are two souls in the guhayam in the heart atma and parmatma so if at all they are able to understand that i am soul different from body they start thinking oh, i am only parmatma i am god and there are some philosophers who tell you are god you don't realize you are god this is not recommended here as per bhagavad gita nitya nitya naam nitya naam plural infinitesimal living entities will continue and all their desires will be supplied by nitya one infinite soul lord krishna has told the soul cannot be cut into pieces nayanam chindanti shastrani it is it cannot be broken so it is not that from one soul small souls have come up again it will merge it will become god or that you are god so all these are misunderstandings created because of material desires either desire to enjoy matter or desire to leave matter for attaining liberation both are different formats of material desires so when a person desires the satisfaction of god then he is able to have perfect understanding of spiritual life so krishna is telling here others cannot understand about the soul even after hearing a lot dehi nityam avadhyoyam dehe sarvasya bharata tasma sarvani bhutani natvam shochitum arhasi who descendant of bharat he who dwells in this body is eternal and can never be slain therefore you need not grieve for any creature this is the conclusion of lord krishna about the subject matter of soul lord krishna presented both the perspective if at all you are thoughtful even though you are atheist you should not lament if for you uh, everything is chemical combination who cries for loss of chemicals and if you understand you are wise you understand eternal soul again why you are lamenting but lord krishna being god he needs to give proper knowledge about soul he explains please understand the conclusion is he who dwells in the body is eternal and can never be slain dehi nityam avadhyoyam deha means body dehi means one who lives in the body one who lives in the body can never be destroyed this is a great revelation and a person should get very much fascinated by this knowledge oh i am eternal then who was i in my previous life what am i going to become in the next life we all understand oh nature nature does yes nature does everything nature is going to give us next body but we also understand nature works strictly as per laws so which are those laws which are governing my next body now everybody is so very much cautious of oh, which school i should take admission in which college i should have which business i should launch which technology is going to come let me keep myself updated otherwise i'll be out of business we are going to be out of body where is preparation about next life this is very important subject matter a great revelation and this is just the beginning of the knowledge of bhagavad gita understand that we are eternal so arjuna was putting forth various reasons not to fight first of all arjuna was telling i do not think how any good can happen it will cause us great distress and lamentation so krishna has given argument of soul different from body to avoid all the lamentation arjuna gave another argument of not fighting he is telling this is against my duty against dharma now krishna is going to give arguments to arjuna how fighting is his duty and it is not against dharma even though he is supposed to kill his elderly respectable relatives swadharmam api cha veksya navikampitum arhasi धर्मुद्धाश्रेयोन्यत क्षत्रिय न विद्यते कंसिडरिंग योर स्पेसिफिक ड्यूटी एज अ क्षत्रिय यू शुड नो दैट देर इज नो बेटर एंगेजमेंट फॉर यू देन फाइटिंग ऑन रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल्स 
and so there is no need for hesitation. <clears throat> Dharma means intrinsic behavior or characteristic which cannot be separated. It has come from Dhri Dhatu. Dhri means to capture. Dharma means something which maintains one's existence. Just like sweetness is the dharma of sugar, sugar cannot be bitter. Heat is the dharma of fire. In a similar fashion, different dharma is given to living entities who are absorbed in the bodily concept of life. Their intrinsic behavior which they are never supposed to leave, using that way, performing duties in that fashion, they should maintain their existence. Why such duties are given? So that eventually they can come to the platform of self-realization. Just like the dharma for a young student is not to carry calculator in the examination hall and the dharma for an advanced student is to carry one must carry scientific calculator in the examination similarly for kshatriya it is not allowed to be non-violent and for brahmana it is not allowed to be violent he must always remain non-violent. So something which is dharma for one person becomes a dharma for another. So just like the child is gradually trained, in a similar fashion, the consciousness is given chance for gradual elevation to come to its original state. Thus Arjuna was having body of a Kshatriya. So Krishna is telling Arjuna, please stick to your Swadharma. What is your Swadharma? As a Kshatriya, your specific duty is to fight. So even though there are inconveniences, you should tolerate. Because if you do not stick to your Dharma, you will not be able to attain Self-Realization. And only by Self-Realization, you can attain Immortality. Yadrichaya chopapannam Svargadvaram apavritam Sukhinakshatriya partha labhante yuddhami drisham. O Parth, happy are the Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. Atachetvam imam dharma. Atachetvam imam dharmyam. Sangramam na karishyasi tata svadharmam kirtim cha hitva papam avapsyasi. If, however, you do not fight this religious war, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. Akirtim chapi bhutani kathayishyanti te vyayam Sambhavitasya cha kirtil maranad atirichyate People will always speak of your infamy, and for one who has been honored, dishonor is worse than death. Bhayadranad uparatam Mansyantetvam maharathah Yesham chatvam bahumato Bhutvayasya silaghavam The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only and thus they will consider you a coward. Avachya vadansya bahun Vadishyanti tavahitah Nindantas tava samarthyam tato dukhataram nukim. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Hatova prapsya se svargam jitva va bhokshya se mahim tasma duttishtha konteya. Yuddhaya Krita Nishchayaha 
O son of Kunti, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up and fight with determination. So, if a Kshatriya dies fighting on the battlefield facing his enemy, then he is immediately promoted to planets where the standard of living is very, very high. So Arjuna is being told, if you die, then you will go to heaven. If you live, you are victorious, then you will enjoy the earthly kingdom. Thus, by all means, you should fight. Sukh dukhe same kritva, labha labha jaya jayao, tato yuddhaya yujyasva, naivam papam avapsyasi. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting, without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat, and by so doing, you shall never incur sin. So Arjuna was fearful of committing sins, breaking the laws of nature. So we should be very very careful of not committing sins. All the sufferings that we have is only because of breaking the laws of nature that we have. If we think, oh, now this uh, some virus is there in the world, it is creating problem. Let me now fix it with some technology. With technology, you might be able to fix the virus. But if we have broken the laws of nature more, more viruses are going to attack us. So if we break the laws of nature, we suffer. Bad people around us, bad situations around us, bad governance, these are only instruments. These people do not know. So we should be very, very careful not to commit sins. And here Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna, if you fight simply for the sake of fighting as a matter of duty, without getting attached to the results, without caring for victory or gain, profit or loss, then such an action never incurs sin. So do not worry, in this attitude you please fight. Eshate Abhihita Sankhe Buddhir Yogate Vimam Shrinu Buddhya Yukto Yaya Partha Karma Bandham Prahasyasi Thus far I have declared to you the analytical knowledge of Sankhya philosophy. Now listen to the knowledge of Yoga whereby one works without fruitive result. O son of Pritha, when you act by such intelligence, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Sankhya means analysis. Analytical study of body and spirit soul has been carried out very nicely by Lord Krishna. And this is what Lord Krishna is explaining as Sankhya. Now, after very nice analysis of one's existence completely different from the body, Lord Krishna is explaining the second level. It is not sufficient just to know that I am not the body. If we understand I am not the body, I will not be affected by the distress of the body. But I do not want just freedom from stress and miseries. I want positive happiness and pleasure in life. So how can the soul have positive pleasure in life, happiness in life, when the soul engages in the service of the super soul, gets connected with the super soul? And that is called yoga. Yoga word is very famous, but people do not know what is the actual meaning of yoga. We think throwing hands and legs around in the air, that is called yoga. The word yoga actually has come from yuj dhatu. Yuj means to link or to connect. So the process of linking the individual soul with the super soul, God, is called yoga. What is this linking? It is not any mechanical linking. Just like man and woman get linked in a relationship. So we have a relationship with God. We have forgotten that relationship. So when a person is able to revive his relationship, once we are out of this bodily concept of life, by following the spiritual discipline under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, our memory is revived of our eternal relationship with God. God is eternal, we are eternal, and our relationship is also eternal. 
so when we are able to revive that relationship and engage in the service of god in that relationship then that is called yoga now here there are various kinds of yoga systems described in the bhagavad gita lord krishna is explaining a very advanced form of yoga practice which is called buddhi yoga yoga is a ladder not everyone is expected to be on the top rung of the ladder so as per the capacity of individuals different rungs different processes of yoga have been recommended but a person should not get stuck at any of the level one should keep on progressing karma yoga dhyan yoga raj yoga ashtang yoga finally a person should come to the level of bhakti yoga which is the topmost yoga system which is also known by the name buddhi yoga buddhi yoga means doing yoga not by changing your external circumstances as uh, the yogas and asanas yoga asanas and the pranayams which are part of hatha yoga or ashtanga yoga which is normally taken as yoga in that you have to do external adjustments you have to leave your house family go to the himalayas or sacred place pure place and then sit there alone stop your reading stop your activities some external arrangements have to be done but this buddhi yoga is such an advanced process there is no need of any external arrangement using the same activity you are an educator you can continue your profession of educator you are a businessman you can continue being a businessman arjun was a fighter he could continue being a fighter at the same time do yoga establish your relationship with the supreme soul how simply by manipulating your intelligence this is called buddhi yoga so this very advanced form of yoga lord krishna will now explain to arjuna and although this is most advanced this is most practical also because being situated in one's own position in one's own occupational duty one can perform and attain success of spiritual life so what is this yoga let us try to hear very very carefully नेह भिक्रम नाशोस्ति प्रत्यवायो न विद्यते स्वल्पमप्यस्य धर्मस्य त्रायते महतो भयात् इन दिस एंडेवर देयर इज नो लॉस और डिमिन्यूशन एंड लिटिल एडवांसमेंट ऑन दिस पाथ कैन प्रोटेक्ट वन फ्रॉम द मोस्ट डेंजरस टाइप ऑफ फियर So Lord Krishna explains if you follow this process of yoga suppose you are able to finish only 5% in this life there is no loss next life you will begin from that point 5% in material world it is not possible that you finish first two years of your college in this life and next life you continue from third year it is not possible but in this process of buddhi yoga neha bikrama nasho asti there is no loss or diminution from the same point you can continue in next life and keep on continuing till you reach perfection and it is told swalpam apyasya dharmasya even though you have just a small beginning in this path it saves you from the greatest danger what is the greatest danger people think oh if i lose my job that is great danger if i lose uh, my family member that is great danger yes these are dangerous situation but anyway we are going to lose all these things and after losing all our relatives all the money name fame position that we have if we degrade to lower species of life that is the greatest danger most serious fear so now there is lot of talk about uh, data data colonization we should not give our data to others we will lose our independence people care lot about their independence the independence day is national holiday it is celebrated people take pride in independence nobody wants to become dependent everyone wants equal rights but what if after human form of life we degrade to animal species we become dog finish all independence is gone we become domestic animal all independence is gone and if we don't become domestic animal life is much more horrible always we are fearful somebody can kill me somebody can attack me suddenly 
fearing, fearing, ultimately somebody will kill, attack and we are finished. So this is the most dangerous fear. Just imagine you are there out and there are all killers around you. Anybody can come and kill you anytime. How your life would be so full of fear. This is the greatest fear of life. If I degrade to animal species, unfortunately, there is no knowledge. Just like children, we are attached to materialistic pursuits and we are not able to think that the nature has given me this human body. Some species have got animal bodies also. If I become animal, how horrible my life would be. But if we perform Buddha Yoga, even a small beginning saves from, from degrading to animal species. A human form is guaranteed and a person begins from the point he stopped in the previous life. <clears throat> Vyavasayatmika buddhir ekeha kurunandana bahushakahyanantascha buddhayo vyavasayina those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. So those who are following this Buddhi Yoga process, they are fixed up because they know the aim of life. But not everyone is able to appreciate that this is the aim of life, the highest activity. And even the Vedic scholars are not able to appreciate this. Why they are not able to understand? Lord Krishna explains. Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadanti Avipaschitaha Vedavad Rataf Partha Nanyad Astiti Vadinaha Kamatmana Svargapara Janma karma phala pradam, kriya vishesh bahulam, bhoga ishvarya gatim prati. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets, result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. Bhogeshwarya prasaktanam taya parita chetasam vyavasayatmika buddhi samadhau navidhiyate. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination of devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nistraigunyo Bhavarjuna Nirdvanvo Nitya Satvastho Niryoga Kshema Atmavan the Vedas mainly deal with the subject mat, subject of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes. The Vedas mainly deal with the subject of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, O Arjuna. Be transcendental to all of them. Be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the Self. Vedavadarataf partha na anyad asti itivadinah People get trapped in the fruitive activity segment of the Vedas called Karmakanda because generally people in this world are having material desires. So Vedas, in order to gradually bring them to the point of surrender to Supreme Lord, in order to increase their faith in the Vedic authority, promise them material benefits. You do this sacrifice, this charity, this tapasya, austerity, and you will get such wisdom, such heroic power, such fame, and very nice life partner, good children. And because people are having material desires, they get stuck in following these things of the Vedas. Thus many people ask why Krishna's name is not much mentioned in uh, 
Rig, Yaju, Sam, and Tharve, the Vedas, but that of various Devatas are more mentioned. Yes, that is fact. Krishna's name is mentioned, but not much, because Vedas mainly talk of Karma Kanda portion. Fruit of activity, for that there is no need of disturbing Supreme Lord. And uh, you can approach other Devatas and get your desires fulfilled. Actually, even for that, material desires also we should approach Supreme Lord because He is Supreme Power. But people are not interested in the Supreme Lord. And uh, thus Vedas tell, it's alright. You have no interest in Supreme Lord. You have only material desires. Approach these various other Devatas. But when a person is... Even because when he follows this Karmakanda portion, material desires will be fulfilled. But even after following and fulfillment of all the material aspirations, the contentment of the heart does not come. So then a person is expected to come to next level of knowledge that is called the Jnana Kand, which is mentioned in the Upanishads, that is called Vedanta. It is at that point that Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna to come to at least. So mostly people tell Vedavada Ratha Partha. They tell, oh, there is nothing more than religious rituals. And you do this ceremony, do this fasting, and uh, you visit temple once in a while. And that's all what is religion. I am very religious man. So Krishna is telling, please do not get stuck in these religious formalities. And rise to Vedanta. The end of the Vedic knowledge, the knowledge of the Upanishad, spiritual inquiry. And Krishna is telling very importantly, Nirdvanvo Nitya Satvastho Nir Yoga Kshema Atmavan. The whole world is bothered about gain and safety. I want to gain more money, I want to gain more fame, recognition, respect, property in the society. Or people are worried about safety. Once you have gained it, I may not lose it. But Krishna is telling, be free from all anxieties about gain and safety. Oh, then uh, if I simply care, yes, I will care about spiritual life. But then at least we have to bother about material affairs. If I don't think about my gain and safety, uh, then I will be in distress. This is the general understanding. But Krishna is telling no. Why no? Let us see the next important verse. Yavanarthodpane Sarvatasamplto Dake Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu Brahmanasya Vijanataha All purposes that are served by the small pond can at once be served by the great reservoirs of water. Similarly, all the purposes of the Vedas can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them. So in India, it was mainly full of villages. Even now, uh, mainly the population lives in villages. But earlier, the cities were very, very less. Hastinapur, Dwarka, very less cities. Mainly it was village. Because people were knowing we are just travelers. Instead of building a huge palatial apartment, let me save my efforts for spiritual salvation. So they would live a simple life in village and how would they arrange water? There were no boring and uh, modern supplies as we have now. So there were wells. And there were different wells for different purposes. There would be one well in which you can take bath. From another well, you can take water for drinking purpose. Then there is third well for washing clothes, fourth well for washing dishes. In this way, there would be at least half a dozen wells in villages. But if you have river in the village, then there is no need of well. Then all the actions can, all the activities can be carried out on the river bank. You can wash clothes there, you can take bath, you can fetch water for drinking. Because in flowing water, there is no contamination. But in static water of well, there can be contamination. So here it is being explained, if you have a river in your village, a big water reservoir, then there is no need of having small wells. There is no need of digging, making such a great effort. So similarly, a person who is a Brahmana, Brahmana means Brahma Janati Ti Brahmana, who is a self-realized soul, who knows the purpose behind all the Vedas, then he need not follow other religious formalities for gain and safety. So what is the purpose of the Vedas? 
that lord krishna will explain in the bhagavad gita itself 15th chapter vedaischa sarvair aham ev vedyo vedant krit vedavid ev chaham from all the vedas i am to be known so ultimately the end of knowledge is to understand the science of god so a person who understands krishna who understands god then there is no need of following any religious formalities or worrying about gain and safety so this process of buddhi yoga is so nice lord krishna is explaining that automatically yoga and shema will happen whatever gains are required for your comfortable living those gains will be arranged and whatever requires to be protected for a comfortable life that protection will also follow this is buddhi yoga so people think if i follow spiritual life i will suffer in the material life i will have material discomfort no spiritual life is all inclusive if we follow buddhi yoga then not just we have spiritual advancement but also all the material comforts follow automatically by the grace of the supreme lord how is it so lord krishna will explain कर्मण्येवाधिकारस्ते माफलेशु कदाचना मा कर्मफल हेतुर्भूर माते संगोस्त्व कर्मणि यू हैव अ राइट टू परफॉर्म योर प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी बट यू आर नॉट एंटाइटल्ड टू द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन नेवर कंसीडर योरसेल्फ टू बी द कॉज ऑफ द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ योर एक्टिविटीज and never be attached to not doing your duty so this is buddhi yoga very important and well known verse but people uh, are missing the crux do not understand the actual import so here lord krishna is telling karmanne vadhikarahte you have a right to perform your duty but you do not have adhikara ma faleshu on the result of the activity so somebody will tell oh really i have a right to do my job but i do not have the result right on result right on salary yes this is the right understanding we have right to do our job but we do not have right upon the result which we are generating out of our activity how is it so why we do not have right so actually it is simple understanding buddhi yoga we need to have little intelligence to understand this If we see in the world around us there are so many species we have various plants and trees which produce grains and fruits suppose the plant in the field tells i have been standing here braving the heat cold and the sunlight and i have produced these grains so they belong to me i will not give it to humans or to other animals then humans and animals will die If the mango tree tells this mango belongs to me I have produced it I will not give it to anybody what shall we eat if the tree does not give its leaves it barks it's wood to us how shall we make our houses so we have to understand there is very nice symbiotic arrangement in the nature just like the workers in a factory say somebody is working in a mobile factory so the training given to manufacture the mobile handsets the required technology equipments and the materials all have been provided by the proprietor of the firm so the worker cannot tell i have manufactured this handset so i will carry it home he has no right over the result of his activity it belongs to the proprietor in a similar fashion whatever actions we are doing from this body this body does not belong to us we have not manufactured this brain this intelligence so the skills the body and the matter that we manipulate to produce some effect in this world that matter also we have not created so the ingredients the material the training the body the brain intelligence everything is given by god so actually the result belongs to god ma faleshu kadachana we do not have right upon the result so god has a plan to use it for the welfare of all the other species 
So if at all we are not able to understand that it belongs to God, we can use it. That also Krishna recommends in the twelfth chapter. You use it for general social purpose, for so-called pious activities and charity. But you are not entitled to enjoy everything for yourself. Unfortunately, now what is happening in society? We think whatever I earn, it belongs to me. I will enjoy it. Whatever property I have made, that belongs to me. I will enjoy it. This is ignorance. We are disturbing the laws of nature. If the plants and trees do not give us their produce, then there is no civilization. But human being, human being has got some freedom, which he should use to engage in the service of God. He uses that freedom to become independent of God. So this is very bad mentality. So thus, Lord Krishna is telling you have right to do your duty, but you are not entitled for the results. Then how will I maintain myself? Yes, for maintenance we can take it. For maintaining, keeping body and soul together, that much resources I can enjoy, and apart from that, it should be used in the service of God. That is not mentioned in this verse because this is the beginning. Lord Krishna explains that in further verses. Lord Krishna explains, "Yat karoshi, yat juhoshi, yat dadasi, tat kurush madarpanam." Whatever you do. offer the result to me because i am the proprietor that lord krishna gradually will reveal his identity aham sarvasya prabho matta sarvam pravartate i am the supreme proprietor everything belongs to me then lord krishna tells ma karm phal hetur bhur do not become the cause of your activity if i do any activity for my sense pleasure then i become the cause of that activity and then that activity creates karma bondage if i do let's say good activity i have helped some people done lot of charity then if i did this charity for my pleasure oh yes uh, i will enjoy name and fame without keeping the pleasure of god in mind not under the direction of god then the money will come back to us we have to take one more birth to get back that money and as soon as we take birth then the pains of birth staying in the womb of mother so many diseases old age and death they also follow thus we get trapped in the bondage of action and reaction so thus it is told ma karm phal hetur bhur do not do any activity for your pleasure you feel good in helping others you feel good in uh, tasting some nice food stuff so i'll work hard so that i can eat nicely you feel good in showing off your property to others so you are working no if for your feeling good you are doing any activity then you become the cause of the activity and you have to face the result of the action just like a soldier soldier may kill many many uh, people but if he has done this killing under the direction of king then he will not be given any punishment but without the direction of king or government the soldier kills enemy without order even that is considered a sin how you can kill even enemy without my order then he will be punished so for his own enjoyment on his own he cannot kill even enemy but on the direction of the government the soldier can do unlimited killings and there would be no sin incurred for that similar case happens with us also on our own if we do any activity good or bad we get trapped in the cycle of karma but if we do that activity only for the satisfaction of god then we are free from the bondage of action and reaction now one may tell oh if nothing belongs to me uh the result of my activity do not belong to me then why to act so here it is being told mate sangvastva karmani no you cannot do not be attached to not doing your duty because not doing duty is sinful yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya siddhya siddhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyate be steadfast in yoga o arjuna perform your duty and abandon all attachment to success or failure such evenness of mind is called yoga siddhi asiddhi we 
do any activity because we want to see ourselves successful we rejoice success and we become very much disturbed if we fail in our attempts so this is not yoga these kinds of activities create bondage a yogi can also do the same activity of studying doing business doing job or any other service but how a yogi acts without attachment to success or failure siddhi asiddhi samah bhutva a person should not care just like a soldier should not think oh why i am being ordered to fight will i win the war or i will lose the battle no if the soldier is ordered you go and fight the soldier should march ahead and fight without caring for profit and loss this is called a yogi a yogi understands what is the desire of god and he simply acts for the pleasure of god without caring for success or failure in that activity this is called yoga such equanimity is yoga दूरे नवर कर्म बुद्धि धनंजया बुद्ध शरण अन्वेच्छ कृपण फल हेतव ओ धनंजय रिड योर सेल्फ ऑफ ऑल फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज बाय डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड सरेंडर फुली टू दैट कॉन्शियसनेस दोज हू वॉन्ट टू एंजॉय द फ्रूट्स ऑफ देअर वर्क आर माइजर्स so krishna is telling avaram avaram means abominable karma so this fruitive activity doing any activity so that you can enjoy the result it is avaram god is telling it is abominable because it is stealing it is just like a worker creating any product in the factory so that he can use it for his own self that is stealing that is abominable that is criminal mentality so god has given everything everything should be offered simply to god god is a person this is the revelation of bhagavad gita that is why god is called bhagwan a person and why this person is so demanding give it to me give it to me no actually he is not demanding this demand is not of an autocratic ruler this demand is that of a of an eternal lover a lover expects please do it for me give something to me to eat that gives pleasure in the relationship thus we will find further in bhagavad gita krishna is telling patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktaya prayachhati if you are an ordinary person you are not very rich person uh, at least you can grow a plant in your house that everybody can do and offer the leaf of that plant from to me is it very difficult task you cannot even do that at least you have water in your house toyam please offer that water to me but bhaktiya please do it with love why krishna is telling this because krishna knows unless we engage ourselves in this loving relationship with god we will never be satisfied and anyway we are doing this activity nobody works in this work world very hard so that he can enjoy all the money and prosperity that he has he uses those things for others he uses them for the people for his family members but unless one uses it in the service of god there is no satisfaction of the heart a person works very hard for the family the family is never satisfied they ask what you have done for us and the person poor fellow entire life has worked only for the family for his bed up, up till his best capacity but they complain what you have done so neither the object of service is satisfied neither the person who is rendering service is satisfied so when the family is not there especially in the western countries people have dogs pets and they want to engage their money in their service sometimes they give all the property to dogs because a person wants love loving reciprocation in the life So Krishna knows we living entities can never be satisfied unless we revive our loving relationship with God. So Krishna is not in need of anything; He has everything. So when we offer the result of our activity to God, then what happens? This loving relationship is established, and then that satisfies us so much we do not have any material desires. And when we do not have material desires, the nature is designed only to fulfill our desires. Then we will not have material body. and if we do not have material body we have a spiritual body and we go to the place where the personality of god is living that place is called vaikuntha padam gachanti anamayam that krishna will explain here
so this is called broad mentality this is called a loving relationship liberal mindedness krishna has given me everything let me work just for krishna and other mentality let me work so that i can enjoy i can steal personally what i produce neither we can okay no no i don't use it for myself i work very hard so that i can do charity and help others no sir you cannot do charity of stolen goods that is also crime everything belongs to god so it should be used only for god now again please do not think service of god is exclusive of service to other living entities we are part and parcel of god krishna will explain so service of god automatically yav anartho dupane sarvata samploto dukhe so please do not think service of god will exclude service of family members service of nation service of other people animals rather all these living entities are automatically served it is not that when we love god we start hating our family members no real love for the family arises when we love god otherwise nobody can love even family that is why even among the most closest relationship husband and wife there is separation there are so many divorces because people are interested in their own pleasure personal pleasure but when we understand when we love god when we know my family members are also part and parcel of god we cannot love a person and hit his finger so we understand if i love god they are also part of god inseparable part of god so how can i hate them so love of god if it is brought in our life then a person actually increases one love for his family members increases his love for all the species and universal welfare happens automatically if the family members don't behave nicely he understands oh still i should behave nicely because they are part and parcel of god they may be in ignorance they are offending me but i know that they are part and parcel of god how can i hurt them so thus all the relationships are automatically improved and a person's all duties are automatically fulfilled just like we do prasad distribution sometimes people take it as poor feeding so that is not poor feeding we are distributing prasadam the remnants of god to other living entities by taking this rich and poor without discrimination they all advance in their knowledge of god in their love of god but those people who are poor and hungry they are also fed automatically so social service automatically is taken care so thus if a person simply realizes one's duties towards god all other duties are automatically fulfilled but if one forgets his duty towards god then no sir you cannot do charity with stolen goods your object of charity will not be satisfied neither will you be satisfied so krishna is telling avaram karma karpana phal hetva do not become a miser in this human form of life you can enjoy some temporary happiness by enjoying the results of your work but then you are a miser you do not know if you simply offer that to god instead of using it for your own self you can attain unlimited happiness for which you are hankering and you can attain immortality buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukrit duskrite tasmad yogay yujyasya yogah karma sukoshalam A man engaged in devotional service rids himself of both good and bad actions even in this life therefore strive for yoga o arjuna which is the art of all work so yoga buddhi yoga is nothing but the art of all work the best way of performing any action is called yoga so somebody can do the activity which is called sin which is stealing breaking the laws of nature which is called duskriti so krishna is telling do not do duskriti but krishna is telling here ubhe sukrit duskrite do not do sukriti also do not do good deeds also now this person can ask why krishna is telling sukrite duskrite i will not do bad deeds why good deeds are also prohibited because as we discuss in the previous verse so called good activity is also bad and we can understand from a different perspective also any good activity will it stop our death 
will it stop our diseases will it stop our old age no it means even that activity is sinful otherwise nature will not kill us so any activity which does not stop our death is actually sinful activity right if any person is being given capital punishment to be hanged till death it means he has done wrong activity so we have to understand any activity which does not stop our death old age and disease that is bad activity so why good activity is also called bad activity because what is good activity all the resources belong to god now those you want to use directly in the service of others without engaging them in the service of god thus it is bad activity but still it is recommended because at least you start thinking about others you do not remain on a very lower platform of animal consciousness my life my resources for myself at least you start thinking about others so such pious activities are recommended but even if you do pious good charitable noble activities what you will have is a good birth with good material facilities enjoyment in next life but whatever enjoyment material facilities we have we may become very educated beautiful successful and uh, then we may have a big house for ourselves but then instead of suffering from covid in a small house you will suffer from covid in a big house suffering will not go you may be less educated you may attract a life partner who is also less educated or less beautiful if you are having a beautiful attractive body learned body you may attract a life partner which is beautiful and learned but fight with the life partner will happen the pain will always be there so you fight with a less educated life partner or more educated life partner similarly death will also accompany and old age will also accompany so thus if a person is wise he understands so called good activities also do not solve the problems of life i simply suffer from the same problems in a different setup so one should not do good and bad activities both because both entangle us in the laws of karma as soon as we do any activity we produce reaction of that activity which we have to suffer or enjoy in a material body and as soon as we take a material body it means birth death old age and disease these miseries they follow so krishna is telling rise above good activity and bad activity simply do the activities in yoga in buddhi yoga in krishna consciousness so when the activity is done only for the satisfaction of the supreme god then such activity is called neither good nor bad such activity is called akarma it does not bring any material reaction it brings spiritual reaction you become spiritually happy and liberated from cycle of birth and death कर्म जुक्ता फल त्यक्ता मनीषिण जन्म बंध विनिर्मुक्ता पदम गनामय द वाइज एंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस टेक रेफ्यूज इन द लॉर्ड एंड फ्री दम सेल्स फ्रॉम द साइकल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ बाय रेनाउंसिंग द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन इन द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इन दिस वे दे कैन अटेन दैट स्टेट बियॉन्ड ऑल मिजरीज so when we renounce the action the results of our actions then we attain a stage beyond all miseries padam gachanti anamayam we become free from janma bandha vinirmukta from the cycle of birth and death oh so krishna is telling us to commit suicide you become free you do not take birth again you stop to exist no as krishna has already explained there was never a time we were not existing there will never be a time we will not exist but we will get freedom from this process of taking material bodies birth and death happens to material bodies we will continue to exist how shall we continue to exist anamayam in a state beyond all the miseries that place is called vaikuntha so now uh, the limitations in modern science do not give us knowledge about other planets life on other planets so just like we have various elements in our body there is earth water fire but apart from this body there are places where only water is there water is predominant there also there is life then only earth is predominant there also there is life and only fire is predominant like sun globe there also there is life 
in a similar fashion there is a planet rather there are many many planets where only spirit soul is there there is no matter at all now because only they are made up of spiritual substance time has got no influence upon them they are eternal so because there is no temporary nature there is no death no disease no old age no change introduced by time so the vedas tell us not to waste this human form of life in transferring to other planets where the living standards could be better but ultimately life will end diseases old age will happen one should work to transfer oneself to a state of anamayam where there is no misery at all and that is called vaikuntha tad dhamam parama mama the supreme person he lives on that planet so that description further we will understand in the bhagavad gita very beautifully elaborately lord krishna will explain so this is the aim of human form of life this is beyond moksha not just freedom from birth and death but going to spiritual planet and engaging in activities full of loving relationship with god and his associates yada te moha kalilam buddhir vyati tarishyati तदा गता निर्वेद श्रोतव्य श्रुत वेन युअर इंटेलिजेंस हेज पास आउट ऑफ द डेन्स फॉरेस्ट ऑफ डिल्यूजन यू शैल बिकम इन डिफरेंट टू ऑल दैट हैज बीन हर्ड एंड ऑल दैट इज टू बी हर्ड श्रुति विप्रतिपन्ना ते यदा स्थाति निश्चला समाधावचला बुद्धिस्तदा योगम अवाप्स्यसी when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the vedas and when it remains fixed in the trance of self realization then you will have attained the divine consciousness so when a person starts acting in buddhi yoga realizes his relationship with the lord he experiences such an extraordinary happiness in life he does not care about flowery language of vedas oh you will have such material enjoyment in other planet or this planet he does not care about religious formalities and rituals so one need not wait till death for the proof of spiritual life even in this body person can perceive and realize all that we have discussed this extraordinary spiritual happiness which is called samadhi the transcendental consciousness so what are the symptoms of a person who is absorbed in such consciousness even while living in this material body that is called sthita pragya that lord krishna is going to explain now to arjuna arjuna uvacha sthita pragya se ka bhasha samadhi sthasya keshava sthita dhi kim prabhasheta kim asita vrajeta kim Arjuna said what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence how does he speak and what is his language how does he sit and how does he walk important word used in this verse is samadhi samadhi sthasya keshava one who is situated on the platform of samadhi or transcendence spiritual platform how does he behave how does he talk how does he walk what are the symptoms so this samadhi is the ultimate objective of yoga in the ashtanga yoga process which starts with yam niyam asan pranayam dharana dhyan finally one has to reach the stage of samadhi Samadhi means complete absorption in the thoughts of Krishna. So many yoga processes now people are getting patents also for it. And people are inventing various ways of doing yoga. But somehow they have forgotten the ultimate objective which one has to attain by doing yoga. It is not simply reducing belly fat or some physical fitness or some temporary peace of mind. but the ultimate objective of yoga is to reach the stage of samadhi when a person is completely absorbed on the mind is absorbed on the spiritual platform 
and spiritual platform means mind is absorbed on the form of lord krishna so the recommendation of meditating on some voidness or some light candle light or sunlight or some impersonal effulgence or focusing on uh, anything else it is not recommended as per the standard instructions given either in the patanjali yoga sutra or in bhagavad gita or in any standard book of yoga that is why it is told shravanam kirtanam vishnoho smaranam the meditation contemplation has to be there on vishnu similarly it is told in mahabharat shantakaram bhujag shayanam padmanabham suresham the form of lord is described very beautifully the lord who is shantakaram bhujag shayanam the most peaceful lord who is lying on the bed of snake padmanabham suresham he is having lotus navel he is the master of all demigods lakshmi kantam kamala nayanam he is the husband of lakshmi the goddess of fortune and his eyes are very beautiful like the petals of lotus flower meghavarnam shubhangam his color is like that of dark cloud so in this way the description is given of the personal features of the lord and then it is told yogi rid dhyanagamyam the yogis rid in their hearts dhyanagamyam so the meditation means meditation on this form of the personality of godhead within one's heart this is the authorized instruction as per mahabharat patanjali yoga sutra bhagavad gita or any other standard book of yoga practice so we should be very careful we should not fall for such modern inventions rather the yoga process is coming from the god it should be taken from the authorized sources so only when the mind is completely fixed without any deviation on the form of personality of god a person reaches the stage of samadhi so this uh, system is also explained by lord krishna in the 6th chapter of bhagavad gita but arjuna rejects that we will see very nice conversation it is and when arjuna rejects because he tells i am a householder how can i go to the himalayas or Uh, some jungle and sit there alone i have to leave all my family members my uh, my kingdom and all other opulences and so much hardship i cannot take i cannot control my mind in that way so krishna tells do not worry you are already the best yogi because yogi naam api sarvesham mad gatena antaratmana among all the yogis mad gatena antaratmana within his heart one is always thinking of me shraddhavan bhajate yo maam and with great faith bhajate has come from bhaj dhatu means to render service who is always thinking of me and rendering me service same yukta tama mataha he is the best yogi so this is the yoga process which is being prescribed by krishna to arjuna and that is the yoga process which is meant for the people in this age of kali yuga so krishna also will uh, prescribe other yoga process as we will see so that arjuna can reject and so that we can understand when arjuna could not follow who was trained in gurukul and mind and senses were perfectly controlled very sharp moralist but he could not follow so what is the hope for people like us who are always disturbed and short lived that is why it is told in the scriptures krite yadhyayato vishnu krit means in sat yoga the process was this ashtanga yoga dhyan yoga process dhyayato vishnum but the word used here is vishnu again please uh, uh, mind these verses very carefully dhyayato vishnum impersonal meditation on void light x y z is not recommended anywhere dhyayato vishnum and treta yam yajato makhai in treta yoga the same spiritual success was possible by doing yagyas fire sacrifices dwapari paricharyayam in dwapar yoga that success was possible by elaborate temple worship deity worship but in kali yuga we do not have any qualifications to follow either of these processes so kalau in kali yuga in this millennium tad hari kirtanad we need not worry same result can be attained by 
Hari Kirtana chanting the names of Hari. So this is the first symptom of a person who is in Samadhi that he will always be talking only of Krishna or of matters related to Krishna. Kalau Tad Hari Kirtana that success can be attained by Hari Kirtan chanting the names of God. It was also mentioned in the 9th chapter of Bhagavad Gita as we will see in the verse number 14 Satatam Kirtayanto Maam because the mind is always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna so yogi, a real yogi cannot do anything but talk only of Krishna thus it is told Satatam Satatam means always Krishna mentions Kirtayanto Kirtan means to chant or to speak about Krishna Maam Satatam Kirtayanto Maam about me so this is the first symptom. One who is in Samadhi, he cannot do anything but talk only of Krishna or of matters relating to Krishna, Krishna's service. And then other symptoms of transcendence, they follow automatically. Which are those symptoms? Let us see now. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Prajhati yada kaman sarvan parth manogatan atmani evatmana tushtaha sita pragyas The Blessed Lord said, O Parth, when a man gives up all varieties of sense desire which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind find satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. Rajahati Yada Kaman When a person gives up all Kama means material desires. Any desire which is not for the satisfaction of Krishna, when we directly want to enjoy our senses, that is called Kam. Atmendriya Preeti Vancha Tare Bali Kam it just does not mean only the gross sexual desire, but Kama means any kind of desire which is meant for direct enjoyment of senses without pleasing the senses of Krishna. So person whose consciousness is absorbed in transcendence, who is Krishna conscious, Prajahati Yada Kaman, he gives up all such desires. Why he gives up such desires? Because significant word used here is Sarvan Partha Manogatan. These material desires are actually the result of mental concoction. This is very important. Our mind suggests us something. You please do this and you will become happy. And then we chase those suggestions of mind thinking that I will actually become happy. But we have to understand just like a small child. Child's mind suggests him so many desires. You get this toy, you will be happy. You eat mud, you will be happy. You eat many, many chocolates, you will be happy. You don't go to school, you will be happy. But all these are harmful desires. And we have seen previously the example of moth. The mind of a moth suggests, Oh, this fire is so nice. If you have a closer look, you will be very, very happy. And the moth loses its life following the suggestion of mind. Thus, as long as the mind is contaminated by material energy, it is not liberated, one should not listen to the suggestions of mind. So just like following the suggestion of mind in case of child and moth is very very dangerous, it is dangerous for every conditioned soul. So the suggestions of mind are because of association, the material desires are actually because of association. We are hankering for this pleasure which a person can only attain in Samadhi when he is absorbed in loving service of Krishna, always thinking of Krishna. In absence of such pleasure in life, then material desires arise in our life. Even we can understand it from the love affairs of this world also. Sometimes people leave all the their comforts of rich house and family if the family don't agree for marriage and uh, the young couple they live in a very humble circumstances so why are they are able to give up all the comforts of their wealthy families 
and they are able to live a simple life because there is love in life so we are all hankering for this loving relationship but real loving relationship can be established only with god on material platform it does not stay so when there is no love in life then automatically you want certain enjoyment and then you develop some mental concoction you asso- develop association if you associate with tamoguna you develop tamasic desires you saw some drunkards and you assume that they are enjoying oh let me also drink wine and i will enjoy let me also smoke i will enjoy from birth we were not having such desire oh let me smoke let me drink but we had association of smokers and drunkards so such desire came into our mind the students have certain desire i want to crack this particular examination why this is also mental concoction we associated with certain people who were preparing or who had cracked those examinations or who gave value to that examination and then we thought oh if i crack this exam i will have recognition in society and then i'll be happy and then we started following this thing it became our desire so our desires are the result of association we are hungry for pleasure now in association of such people one moth saw another moth oh let me also uh, chase fire and then lost its life so in such association we develop mentally concocted desires and such desires do not actually give us happiness so a person whose consciousness is absorbed in krishna who is in transcendence he is completely satisfied and thus the material desires do not arise in his heart therefore sarvan parth manogatan prajahati yada kaman he is able to able to give up all the material desires because he is very very satisfied just like a man who has eaten till neck in a feast he does not have any more desire to eat any of the tastiest dishes atmanne vatmana tushtah sthita pragyas tadochyate satisfaction is to be found on the platform of self platform of soul so we can find enjoyment on the external platform there is a design you give sense objects to the senses and then there will be pleasure on the external platform but a person who is absorbed in transcendence who is sthita pragya he takes pleasure internally the soul when it is engaged in the service of super soul then there is internal self pleasure because such a yogi is absorbed in the self pleasure he does not care does not feel the need at all to satisfy the senses externally so this is first symptom he will not have any material desires dukheshu anudvigna manah sukheshu vigata spriha vitaraag bhaya krodha sthitadhir munirochyate one who is not disturbed in spite of the threefold miseries who is not elated when there is happiness and who is free from attachment fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind the whole world gets disturbed when they have material problems miseries and they become very happy on finding material happiness but a sage of steady mind is not disturbed by material happiness or distress because he is having complete faith in krishna he is completely dependent upon krishna whenever he faces any miseries in life he takes it as mercy of god because miseries are also very much required when we have material miseries we develop purification of consciousness we develop detachment for this material world and detachment for material world is the result of all spiritual knowledge so this material world as we discussed is it's a very dangerous place it is like a drop of water which is there on the leaf of or the petal of lotus any time with a even a small gust of wind it can fall down and now in kaliyuga even in human species there is so much disturbance so life is very very uncertain any time there is calamity there is chaos there is distress there is depression there is accident so life in material world is full of danger 
So thus detachment from the material world is a great asset and that is brought about by material miseries. So a devotee perfectly knows this fact whenever misery happens he takes it he understands not a blade of grass moves without the sanction of Krishna. So the miseries are also taken as blessing as mercy of Krishna. He thinks I should suffer much more but Krishna has minimized my misery. And when he is having material happiness he is not very much carried away by it. He has no personal desire to enjoy in this world. He only desires to give pleasure to Krishna. Thus for personal pleasure if it comes in his life, he takes it as an opportunity to use these comforts to engage more enthusiastically and energetically in the service of Krishna. His only aim is to satisfy Krishna, give pleasure to Krishna. Thus he is not very excited to have any personal pleasures in life and he is also very happy if there are reverses in life he takes it as mercy of krishna thus he is always equipoised and then vid raga bhaya krodha it is very difficult to get freedom from raga attachment fear and anger now because the devotee's aim is only to satisfy krishna he does not get attached to anything here just like a cashier who is sitting on the bank he does not get attached with whatever money flow can happen he is seeing lot of money in front of him but he understands this money does not belong to me so that is why there is no attachment so a devotee perfectly knows nothing belongs to me my family members actually they are krishna's family in this life we have assembled together as we discussed just like travelers assemble in a restaurant so they have assembled they belong to krishna my duty is to take them to krishna to make them advanced in this process of yoga so thus there is no undue and overly affection for the people around him similarly the resources the money the opulence that he has he understands i am just a cashier and everything this entire property belongs to krishna so that he does not develop attachment with people place or resources because he understands i am just custodian of krishna's property so there is no attachment in life and people are very very fearful oh i may lose uh, somebody i may lose some money i may lose my position because we are very much attached and because a devotee is not attached he is free from fear also vi taraga bhaya krodha and when we are attached to material objects we are not able to enjoy them anger arises krodha and when there is no tendency to enjoy the objects for yourself then there is no anger at all the simply this understanding that everything belongs to krishna makes a devotee a transcendentalist free from any kind of attachment fear and anger can we imagine a state even the most successful people are fearful the most successful sportsmen they are fearful of performance even though they are on top of world they are fearful the best of the performers in academics are very fearful i may not lose my rank So everybody in this material world is fearful but a devotee is fearless how nice is the consciousness and is free of anger as well next symptom yas sarvatra na bhisnehas tat tat prapya shubha shubham na bhinandati na dveshti tasya pragya pratishthita he who is without attachment who does not rejoice when he obtains good nor lament when he obtains evil is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge same examples cashier sometimes there is lot of flow of money so if money flows in our life we become very happy or material success bank is growing the share value is increasing it does not matter to the employees but if i think oh this money belongs to me everything then i'll become very elated or if there is inauspiciousness means if we lose money if we lose reputation lose xyz then we become very much disturbed but if a person is fixed in this consciousness that everything belongs to god then auspiciousness or inauspiciousness one is not disturbed by this just like a cashier is not disturbed by so much excess flow of money or no flow of money he understands money does not belong to me at all 
So thus, a transcendentalist is not at all disturbed by so-called good or evil events which can happen in one's life. Thus, he is always situated without any disturbance. Yada samharate chayam kurmo angani vasarvashaha indriyan indriyarthebhyas tasya pragya pratishthita one who is able to withdraw his senses from the sense objects as the tortoise draws his limbs within the shell is to be understood as truly situated in knowledge so just like a tortoise it spreads out its limbs when required and then it is able to draw its limbs inside the shell as well in a similar fashion a transcendentalist is very different from a materialist. Materialists have loose senses, they cannot withdraw them. They cannot control when there is urge of the eyes to watch something. They cannot control the urge of tongue to taste something or to talk something. They cannot check the urge of belly and genitals, they get carried away. But a devotee follows the do's and don'ts very nicely. So do's and don'ts are very very important for spiritual life. Without regulating the senses, nobody can make advancement. So please note here, stopping the activities of senses is not recommended as it is recommended in the Ashtanga Yoga. Stop all the activities of senses, sit down firmly. You have to close your eyes, you have to uh, not get deviated by any of the material sounds. You have to stop even eating and drinking. And sometimes the ants, they build hill on the body of a yogi. Sometimes. The insects, they eat away all the flesh, as it happened with Hiranyakashipu, Valmiki, so many sages. They cannot move, they cannot eat, they cannot drink, they just have to be sitting on that place. All the sensual activities are stopped. This is the process recommended for the devotees, it's for uh, normal people who are not devotees. But those who are having positive knowledge of God, different kind of yoga system is recommended. And that is what is recommendation of Krishna to all of us through Arjuna. Don't stop the activities of senses. Just like in a class, when the student is naughty, he may be told, pin drop silence, do not talk anything. But a student who is wise, he is encouraged by teacher to come and give a speech. So for a foolish person, they are told, hands up, punishment is given, or kneel down. But a person who is uh, having some skills, he will be told to go and perform on the stage. So thus, different yoga processes are for different people. When positive knowledge of God and there is no knowledge about personal features of God, how to engage in service of God, then such processes are recommended. Okay, do not do at least wrong materialistic activities. Stop the material activities which are cause of all distress. Sit down in one place without eating and sleeping. But those who are having positive knowledge, they are supposed to behave like tortoise. Spread out your limbs in the service of God and for personal enjoyment, no, no, do not indulge, pull your limbs back. So perfect control of the senses is required just like a tortoise. But it is not so easy. I am addicted to so many things. I cannot even uh, regulate my senses for basic things like controlling tea, coffee, smoking or watching some videos. Then how can I exercise such perfect control, use my senses only when required? That is explained here in the next verse. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinaha rasvarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate The embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, though the taste for sense objects remains. But seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. Niraharasya Dehina When you restrict your senses from enjoyment, the taste remains in the heart. So, if you tell a child, sit down, uh, do not do mischievous activity. The child may sit down for a while, but then he will be restless. He wants to go out and play and jump around. In a similar fashion, unless we have a higher taste, the senses will fall for the lower taste, the material activities. So, in order to control the senses from material enjoyment, one needs to experience 
परम दृष्टवा निवर्तते परम मीन्स हायर टेस्ट वेन यू हैव हायर एक्सपीरियंस बेटर प्लेजर देन ऑटोमैटिकली वी विल नॉट फॉल फॉर लोअर प्लेजर्स एंड देन वी कैन हैव सम रिसर्च गो एंड स्टडी द लाइफ ऑफ ग्रेट डिवोटीज हाउ दे आर वेरी इजिली एबल टू गिव अप ऑल द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ पर्सनल सेंस एंजॉयमेंट देर मस्ट बी समथिंग विच इज देयर इन देयर लाइफ जस्ट लाइक रूप गोस्वामी सनातन गोस्वामी they were very very rich but they gave up all opulence and they were sleeping under different trees every night in vrindavan how was this possible because they were experiencing very extraordinary taste in the service of krishna and as yamuna charya says he is a very stalwart devotee the spiritual master of shripad ramanuja charya he was a king before and kings have all the royal opulences and there is so much physical enjoyment in relationship with the other gender so when yamuna chare he renounced his kingdom became a pure devotee he is giving his experience what is this spiritual pleasure he tells yadavadhi mama cheta krishna padar vinde nav nav rasa dham niyudyatam rantu masit tadavadhi bat nari sangame smaryamane bhavati mukh vikar sushtu nishtivanam cha Yadavadhi, from the time I have engaged myself, Krishna Padar Vinde, in meditation upon the lotus feet of Krishna, Nava Nava Rasa, I am experiencing newer and newer pleasures in my heart by this meditation. And when I remember my old gross enjoyment which I had with Nari Sangame with many women, as a royal king, my mouth curls in distaste, Bhav Tu Mukh Vikar, Sush Tu Nishti Vanam Cha. and i spit at this thought so it is very difficult to control the sexual urge but he is telling when i think of that enjoyment that was such low grade enjoyment compared to what i am experiencing now by meditating on the lotus feet of krishna because i am experiencing a higher taste my mouth calls in distaste for these lower grade pleasures this is the way of controlling one senses like a tortoise one has to have param drishtva so just see krishna so clearly he is explaining param drishtva you have to experience higher taste taste of spiritual life then you will be able to do it yat to hi api konteya purushasya vipaschitah indriyani pramathini haranti prasabham manah the senses are so strong and impetuous o arjuna that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them so here krishna is telling the situation of spiritualists who are not devotees who are not able to engage their senses in the service of krishna so krishna is telling yatato hi api konteya even though uh spiritualist is endeavoring learned man is trying to control his senses vipaschita means very learned a person becomes advanced in this knowledge but still pramathini the senses indriyas are so strong haranti prasabham mana forcefully they carry away the mind and we all must have experience in our life we want to control the senses regulate the life but senses are so strong and impetuous forcibly they carry away the mind So Krishna is warning if the mind is not having higher engagement then you will have to follow the dictates of the senses. So thus Krishna recommends here how to have that higher taste. We have been discussing engagement in the service of Krishna one may ask where it is recommended. It is recommended now here very directly in verse number 61. Tani sarvani sanyamya yukt asit mat parah वशे ही यस्ंद्रिया तस् प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता वन हु रेस्ट्रेन्स हिस् सेंसेज एंड फिक्सेस हिस् कॉन्शियसनेस अपॉन मी इज नोन एज अ मैन ऑफ स्टडी इंटेलिजेंस वशे ही यस नाउ कृष्णा इज टेलिंग हाउ यू एक्सपीरियंस दैट हायर प्लेजर वॉट एक्टिविटी डू आई डू दैट आई एक्सपीरियंस दैट हायर प्लेजर ग्रेटर दैन मटीरियलिस्टिक एंजॉयमेंट दैट इज एक्सप्लेन्ड हियर युक्त आसीत मत परह वशे ही यस इंद्रियाणी द इंद्रियाज हैव टू बी कंट्रोल्ड इन सच अ वे दैट 
मत परा युक्त आसीत युक्त मीन्स एंगेज द सेंसेज हैव टू बी एंगेज मत परा मीन्स इन माई सर्विस so the senses are classified as 5 uh, sometimes 10 when you include the karma indriyas and mind is also considered as a sixth sense mana shasthan indriyani prakriti sthani karshiti so all the senses including the mind yukta asit mat paraha in my service they have to be engaged krishna very clearly he is explaining here so this is the highest conception of yoga practice there are many kinds of yogis but krishna is warning unless they reach to this understanding of personality of god and they get positive knowledge of engagement in the service of god when we engage in the service of some people or animal or pets here we get certain pleasure but unless you have knowledge of god and you engage in service of god you cannot experience that param drishtva which will be able to help you get rid of the troublesome materialistic enjoyment so very clearly yukta asit mat paraha the senses have to be engaged in my service this is the way of having higher taste and for those whose senses are not engaged what happens krishna explains now dhyayato vishayan punsa sangasteshu pajayate sanga sanjayate kamah कामात क्रोधो भी जायते वाइल कॉन्टम्पलेटिंग द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द सेंसेज अ पर्सन डिवेलप्स अटैचमेंट फॉर देम एंड फ्रॉम सच अटैचमेंट लस्ट डिवेलप्स एंड फ्रॉम लस्ट एंगर अराइजेस सो वन हु इज नॉट कृष्णा कॉन्शियस इज सब्जेक्ट टू सच स्ट्रॉन्ग अटैचमेंट एंड लस्ट वाइल कॉन्टम्पलेटिंग ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ सेंसेस If a cashier is not conscious, what is my relationship with the bank? I am not proprietor. He will develop lust if he sees lot of money. He would like to enjoy for it for himself. So one who is not engaged in the service of Krishna, when he sees any object of senses, he thinks how I can enjoy it. Dhyayato, when he sees, contemplates, sangha, he develops attachment. I want to enjoy it. and sangha sanjayate kama strong desire lust develops to enjoy the sense objects and then the lust is not fulfilled and when the lust the desires are not fulfilled kama krodho bijayate anger arises krodhat bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibhramah smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho बुद्धि नाशात प्रणश्यति फ्रॉम एंगर डिल्यूजन अराइजेस एंड फ्रॉम डिल्यूजन बिविल्डमेंट ऑफ मेमोरी व्हेन मेमोरी इज बिविल्डर्ड इंटेलिजेंस इज लॉस्ट एंड व्हेन इंटेलिजेंस इज लॉस्ट वन फॉल्स डाउन अगेन इनटू द मटेरियल पूल सो कृष्णा इज वार्निंग हियर द योगीज हु आर नॉट युक्त आसीत मत परा हु आर नॉट एंगेज इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा when they contemplate on the sense object attachment lust anger from anger bewilderment of memory and when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost when intelligence is lost person falls down on the material platform so other yogis also can reach a stage of peace and transcendence but they cannot stay on that platform because a slight agitation created by the mind slight contemplation on sense objects makes them fall down as it happened with vishwamitra a very great yogi and menaka came and he heard the jingle of her bells ankle bells and then he was not able to continue in meditation and he enjoyed with her and then after many many years he realized what mistake i have done i was so nicely advancing in my spiritual life similarly sobhari muni this muni was so advanced that he was able to meditate within the water so he was sitting within the water so that he can avoid any distraction but within the water he saw two fishes copulating and then he could not control the suggestion of the mind he came out married many many princesses and he also lost his spiritual growth so in this way even though these yogis were absorbed on very advanced brahma platform but they could not stay for a long time they fell down thus krishna is warning here please do not follow this process in which higher taste you do not attain 
Thus Krishna explains in the next verse. Rag dvesha vimukta istu vishayan indriya ischaran atma vashya irvidheya atma prasadam adigachati One who can control his senses by practicing the regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord and thus become free from all attachment and aversion. Tu word is very significant here. Tu means but. So Krishna has described the fate of a non-devotee yogi. But Krishna mentions tu. But a person who is devotee, vishyan indriya charan atma vashayar vidhya atma who controls his senses and in this way engages his senses in the service of Krishna, he attains prasadam adhigachati. He attains the prasadam means mercy of the Lord. So I happened to chance upon one author of uh, one prominent religion. So he was explaining his philosophy. He tells, we want to attain spiritual status, but our philosophy is, even if God exists, we do not want to take help of God to make our life perfect. We want to advance on our own strength. We don't want to take even God help, God's help if even God exists. But such a process is not recommended in the Bhagavad Gita, in the standard books of yoga. Here it is mentioned, Prasadam Adigachati, Vidhe Atma. So when a person is able to follow the regulated principles of freedom, sometimes people think, oh, this religious life, spiritual life is very hazelsome. So many restrictions are imposed upon us. Actually, these restrictions are important. Just like traffic rules and regulations, may be considered restriction, unnecessary restriction. But a wise man knows if these traffic regulation, little restrictions are not there, it will create so much of chaos and accident. In a similar fashion, such restrictions are recommended. They are actually regulated principles of freedom. Just like a sick man is given some prescriptions and proscriptions, if he follows that, he will be fit. Then he can enjoy life. So as long as we are there trapped in this body in this bodily concept of life following these restrictions regulative principles of freedom are important so when we follow these do's and don'ts very nicely in the service of krishna we attain prasadam we attain the mercy of krishna without prasadam without mercy of god we cannot advance so we should not get carried away by the philosophies oh you are only god you just have to realize you are god no the word used here is prasadam you are not God, so you need mercy, prasadam of God. If you are God, where is the question of receiving any mercy? No. Prasadam, mercy. Mercy is the key factor for spiritual advancement as per the yoga process described by Lord Krishna. Prasadam adigachati. And a person can attain mercy when he follows the do's and do's and don'ts very strictly and engages senses in the service of Krishna. What happens then when he receives prasadam? Mercy of Krishna, he becomes free from all attachment and detachment also. So materialist is attached and a non-devotee yogi is detached. They go leave all the people and all the sense objects, they go to a far off place, they are detached. But a devotee is neither attached nor detached. He simply wants to engage in service of Krishna. So if I am there around sense objects, uh, let me use those sense objects in the service of Krishna if it is required. He is, his only consideration is what gives Krishna pleasure. If I leave everything and go far away and that brings displeasure to Krishna, I don't want to have such detachment also. So a devotee is perfectly situated in the understanding that my existence is only for the pleasure of God because I am part and parcel of God. This secret Krishna will reveal Mama Ivansha Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatanaha Yatha Taror Mool Nishe Chanena Just like you put water on the roots of the tree, all the leaves are automatically satisfied. This is my design. I am unsure of Krishna, just like the finger is unsure of the body. Only when the finger puts food stuff in the stomach, finger will be healthy. So a devotee knows this. I should not get carried away by attachment. Let me directly enjoy the sweet. Finger should not think. Or detachment. What is the use of feeding the stomach if I am not able to enjoy the food stuff? No. 
so similarly devotee is neither attached nor detached he knows i am unsure of krishna only when i satisfy god satisfy krishna i will gain satisfaction in life so when mercy is received this knowledge is awakened and devotee becomes free from attachment as well as detachment प्रसादे सर्व हानिरस्योपजायते प्रसन्न चेतसो हियाशु बुद्धि पर्यवतिष्ठते फॉर वन हु इज सो सिचुएटेड इन द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस द थ्री फोल मिजरीज ऑफ मटीरियल एग्जिस्टेंस एग्जिस्ट नो लॉन्गर इन सच अ हैप्पी स्टेट वंस इंटेलिजेंस सून बिकम स्टेडी When the mercy of the Lord is received, then there are no more miseries in life. The devotee becomes very happy. So this happiness is very much required to understand the science of God. Those who are always troubled by threefold miseries, who are there on the platform of Rajoguna and Tamoguna, cannot understand the science of God. So when we follow this process of Buddhi Yoga, the first installment of spiritual advancement that we receive is freedom from all the miseries of material life and prasanna chetasho chetaso hi ashu very soon he becomes prasanna very very happy so if by following spiritual life we are not becoming happy means we are not following the standard method otherwise very soon a person should become fixed on the platform of happiness and when a person continues to engage in yoga practice on the platform of happiness then intelligence becomes very clear all the confusion is removed and very clearly understands who am i who is god what is this creation what is the purpose and there is no more confusion in life nasti buddhir yuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavayata shante ashantasya kutas sukham one who is not in transcendental consciousness can have neither a controlled mind nor steady intelligence without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be happiness without peace so here again krishna is warning please do not indulge in other yoga practices in which nasti buddhir ayuktasya ayukta any yoga practice which does not recommend yuktaha means engagement in the service of krishna please do not follow that krishna has told so many ways you will contemplate on the sense objects you will get carried away you will not be able to experience higher taste so here krishna is telling nasti buddhir yuktasya nacha yuktasya bhavana one who is not yukta yukta asit matparah who senses not engaged in my service he cannot have fixed intelligence because he will not have higher pleasure in life then they would always be calculating as we see a materialist is always thinking let me crack this exam then his intelligence changes let me crack that exam also then intelligence changes let me do this job then intelligence changes let me do some other business or some other job uh, then let me marry this person let me divorce this person let me do this let me spend time with in this fashion their intelligence is not fixed always they are wondering what will make me happy so the disturbance is in life is because of no fixed aim because nothing satisfies the spirit soul apart from krishna consciousness so here krishna is telling if you don't engage in my service what will happen nasti buddhi intelligence will not be fixed and intelligence controls the mind people ask how do i have a controlled mind we can have a controlled mind by controlled intelligence when the intelligence is not controlled not fixed then mind will be disturbed mind will be going on this plan that plan this idea that idea mind will always be disturbed na cha yuktasya bhavana bhavana means when the mind is fixed on happiness na cha bhavayata shantir and if the mind is not fixed then there is no shanti there is disturbance ashantasya kuta sukham and krishna is telling if there is no peace in life then where is the question of happiness so krishna has explained again he has warned time is very less this age krishna spoke this bhagavad gita just uh, at the end of dwapar yuga before the beginning of kali yuga 
he wanted to reiterate stress this very important method in kaliyuga people will anyway be very much disturbed so save time from gradual processes of yoga understand this topmost yoga practice buddhi yoga engage your senses in my service offer the results to me try to establish a loving relationship with me don't follow this artificial yoga practice ashtanga yoga adar yoga which was meant for sat yoga vedas are telling krite yad dhyayato vishnum krite yoga it is for sat yoga no where in the vedas it is mentioned in kali yuga you follow this practice we not gain success and further ultimately success of any yoga means yogi hrid dhyan gamyam dhyanavasthita tad gatena manasa pashyanti yam yoginah the meditation has to be there upon lord vishnu krishna in the heart so yogis artificially they want to do this meditation they first want to avoid all the distractions stop all the activities of senses then they start dharana contemplation and then they come to meditation and then they reach samadhi artificially they want to focus on the form of krishna but very natural way of focusing is engaging in the service of krishna when you serve anybody there is a loving relationship and when there is love always you are thinking of your object of love so this natural process of yoga is being recommended by krishna here you please engage in my service whatever little means you may have please use it to the best of your capacity and when there is seva there is love and when there is love you develop revive your affection for me then always you will be thinking of me and the process of yoga is naturally attained without artificial austerities which were recommended for previous ages so krishna tells if you do not engage intelligence is not fixed mind is not fixed thus there is disturbance in life there is no peace and without peace there is no happiness indriyanam hi charatam janmano nu vidhiyate tadasya harati pragyam vayur navam ivam bhasi as a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away man's intelligence so if your intelligence is not fixed then mind will focus on any of the senses just like wind topples the boat even contemplation on sense object of any one of the senses it will topple your intelligence your spiritual life completely and you will again for for material sense enjoyment tasmad yasya mahabaho nigrahitani sarvashah indriyan indriyarthebhyas tasya pragya pratishtita therefore o mighty armed one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence so just like the enemies are curbed by a higher power higher force by human endeavor efforts it is not possible to control the senses so when the senses are engaged in the service of the lord lord's power controls the senses but when we engage in some in certain practice as described here controlling the senses then there would be a reaction from the people around us and what is that reaction very nicely krishna explains yani sha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sanyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sanisha pashyato mune what is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage so people may scoff oh what is your life what is this krishna consciousness this yoga you have been following you have been reading bhagavad gita your life has got transformed now you no longer take pleasure in material enjoyment yes people will say like this they may scoff at times also and krishna is telling that is natural या निशा सर्वभूतानी द नाइट टाइम फॉर मटीरियलिस्ट इज डे टाइम फॉर स्पिरिचुअलिस्ट अ स्पिरिचुअलिस्ट डज नॉट गिव वैल्यू टू दीज एक्सटर्नल सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स विच आर वेरी लो ग्रेड थर्ड क्लास प्लेजर विच ऑलवेज गिव राइज टू सो मेनी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज एंड सो मेनी मिजरीज इन लाइफ बट अ मटीरियलिस्ट गिव वैल्यू ओनली टू दी एक्सटर्नल सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैज नो वैल्यू फॉर इंटरनल स्पिरिचुअल प्लेजर अ मटीरियलिस्ट is 
giving no value or rather does not believe upon the existence of spiritual pleasure the existence of spirit soul and a spiritualist does not give any value to the existence of material identities because all these identities are merely dresses and illusory so what is day time for spiritualist is night time for materialist that is but natural so when people but we need to answer people if they ask such questions why your course of life seems to have completely uh, turned around then we can give them this wonderful logic which krishna is giving here apurimanam achala pratishtham samudram apav pravishanti yadvat tadvat kamayam pravishanti sarve sa shanti mapnoti na kama kami a person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean which is ever being filled but is always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires so krishna is telling just like so many rivers are entering in the ocean but the ocean is not disturbed ocean remains very placid in a similar fashion although so many desires will enter the body but only the person who does not try to satisfy those desires he attains peace if a person tries to fulfill the suggestions given by the mind of materialistic enjoyment he loses his peace of mind why it is explained in shrimad bhagavatam ij jistoka ivanalaha sensual enjoyment is actually not enjoyment as we discussed previously also it is mental concoction there is hunger for higher pleasure so we fall for whatever pleasure is available immediately and this pleasure is not required it is addictive in nature nobody needs to be addicted but once we start chasing following those addictions we cannot help but getting carried away it is not required to smoke it is not required to drink similarly it is not required to have any kind of material enjoyment but once we start material enjoyment the desires always keep on increasing kandu yane na karyo re dukha dukha example given is as an eczema patient has got many wet sores on his body and those are very itchy sores but if a person tries to rub or scratch that sore the itching sensation only increases and if you scratch more finally it starts bleeding the sore becomes worse disease becomes worse so that is the nature so that is why uh, those people who are poor their distress is not so much as that of rich people because poor person has hope if i become rich then i'll be happy but rich person rich person becomes hopeless now i've got so many resources i have gained recognition name fame money also and i am trying to have all the sense objects enjoyment i can have still why there is dissatisfaction in my life what do i do more so they become more distressed and they come in depression because they do not see any hope what else do i do to become happy this is the nature of material happiness it is like putting butter into fire the senses always demand more today you have one cigarette two cigarettes then for same kick you need to have four cigarettes then eight there is no end to it little sex more sex varieties of sex there is no end to it so please understand this is the nature of material happiness nobody educates the best of the brains in the world they do not know after topping in the country in various examinations making the best of uh, technical and business plans ultimately they do not understand because unless prasadam there is mercy of lord it is very difficult to understand this knowledge that actually krishna god is telling a person who tries to satisfy the desires which are always flowing within this mind and body he never attains peace because that is not the design all the material enjoyments are but addictions you do not need them but once you start enjoying them you cannot stop having it so one who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires why is not disturbed because he is relishing higher pleasure such a person attains peace so is it not very simple logic so when people tell oh what is day for us is night time for you you are having other please please explain this that this is real life which we need to actually have 
it is common sense then finally krishna is giving the conclusive knowledge in this chapter vihay kaman yas sarvan puman charati nispriha nirmamo nirahankara sashantim adigachati a person who has given up all desires for sense gratification who is free from desires who has given up all sense of proprietorship and is devoid of false ego he alone can attain real peace so vihay kaman so he understands this logic material desires are addictive it is like rubbing or scratching the wet eczema sore it will only increase worse in the situation so he gives up material desires and nirmamo nirahankara he becomes free from the sense of proprietorship that everything belongs to god nothing belongs to me should should be used in the service of god and then he becomes nirahankara ahankara as krishna will describe further is an energy which makes the soul believe i am this covering i am this body because of this i feel i am the body of the dream i feel i am this body man woman animal so when a person gives up material desires by following this process of yoga then he is become he becomes freed from proprietorship and he becomes freed from false ego he is able to understand i am not this body i am different from this temporary identity and then sa shantim adigachati then he understands i am different what is the profit what is the loss nothing belongs to me he is very very peaceful esha brahmi sthitif partha nainam prapya vimuhyati thitva syamant kale pi brahm nirvanam richhati that is the way of the spiritual and godly life after attaining which a man is not bewildered being so situated even at the hour of death one can enter into the kingdom of god so when a person has this consciousness even at the time of death if one is able to maintain this consciousness then he attains brahm nirvan nirvan means cessation of material existence some philosophers say yes you have to get liberation but after liberation there is void there is no life so such a philosophy is all right for people who are hardcore sense gratifiers who are really who have realized that sense enjoyment gives only frustration and they are so much frustrated by material enjoyment they want to stop this life they just want to get rid of this material life and such philosophy is recommend that you stop this material existence and then you stop existing there is no existence beyond it but this is not what is recommended in bhagavad gita here the special kind of nirvan is the object and that is called brahm nirvan brahm nirvan means positive life a diseased person it is not sufficient for him just to get rid of the disease but he needs to have now positive enjoyment he wants to eat now he wants to walk around move around play enjoy with his family and friends so this positive liberation is called brahm nirvan attainment of the kingdom of god tejo vari mridam yatha vinimayo yatra trisargo amrisha dhamna swen sada nirast hukukam satyam param dhimahi the board of god the description is given in the scriptures as there is tejo vari mridam in this body there is fire there is water and there is air and there is consciousness also and outside this body we see there is a world which is predominantly of water and there is life in water water bodies and then we see there is a world which is predominantly of fire the sun planet and life is there on sun also fire as we discussed scientists have found and the few microbes which are there in fire also like this there are other species who exist in a world completely made up of fire so there is a world which is completely made up of water there is a world which is completely made up of fire there are planets like this there is planet which is completely made up of spirit spiritual substance and krishna tells tad dhamam paramam mama that is my abode 
So this positive knowledge of spiritual life, not just material life is illusion, material forms are illusory, no. You are soul within this body, you have a form, but that form is spiritual. That is revealed when we are out of this material body or out of this bodily concept of life. God is not simply an energy, God is a person, God is having form and there are many activities which are called devotional service in which one has to engage in order to realize this positive spiritual existence and transferring oneself not to any material planet but to the planet which is made of completely spirit is the aim of the topmost yogi. That is what is recommendation of Krishna. So if a person follows this yoga system as described by Lord Krishna, he attains Brahma Nirvanam, attainment of spiritual planets where there, where there is no influence of time and thus there is no fear, no anxiety and there is always higher pleasure of Krishna consciousness. With this we end the second chapter which is the summary of Bhagavad Gita. Here Karma Yoga is explained, Jnana Yoga is explained and a hint of Bhakti Yoga is also given. Further, very beautiful instructions await us in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita that we will discuss in the next session. Hare Krishna.